Chairman, could I clarify that we'll have regular breaks? I'm dealing with all that, don't worry. Great. OK, I can confirm we are now live. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to South Cam's District Council Planning Committee. Uh, my name's John Batchelor and I'm chair of the committee. Uh, the committee vice chair, uh, Councillor Halings, cannot be with us today, so I've asked Councillor Bradnam uh, to be vice chair for the meeting. Uh, so members of the committee, uh, could you confirm that that's acceptable to you, please? Agreed. Yeah. <clears throat> Agreed. Agreed. Anyone against that? No, fine. Right, OK, so Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Bradnam, would you introduce yourself, please? Good morning, everyone. I'm Councillor Anna Bradnam and I represent Milton and Water Beach Ward and I'm happy to be vice chairing today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are supported along the top table today. Um, um, and so I would ask uh, when I call your names, officers, please, if you would turn on your camera and microphone and introduce yourselves. I have the following officers, uh, Chris Carter, who's Delivery Manager, Strategic Sites. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, members. Uh, thank you. Um, Stephen Reed, Senior Planning Lawyer. Uh, good morning, everyone. Fine. Your camera working OK today, Stephen? Yes, evidently. OK, thank you. And Ian Senior uh, of Democratic Services who will be taking minutes today. Good morning. Thank you. I'll introduce case officers uh, as we work through the agenda. So first, a few housekeeping announcements. Please make sure that your device is fully charged and switch your cameras and microphones off unless you are invited to otherwise. Uh, when you're invited to address the meeting, please make sure your microphone is switched on. When you finish uh, addressing the meeting, please turn off your microphone and camera immediately. Speak slowly and clearly, and please do not talk over or interrupt anyone. Please ensure that you are switched off or silenced any other devices you have so that you don't interrupt uh, proceedings. So the normal procedure at planning committee is to take recorded votes and we will continue with this unless there is clear affirmation. When we move to a vote on any item and there is not clear affirmation, I will ask for a roll call to be taken. I will then ask committee members to speak into the microphone so that their vote is clear both to the committee and to those watching the webcast. Members should respond for, against or abstain when their name is called. Committee members present, I will now invite each of you to introduce yourselves. Members, after I call your name, please turn on your camera and microphone. Wait two seconds and say your name and the ward you represent so that your presence may be noted. Please remember to turn off your cameras and microphones after your introduction. Uh, my name is Councillor John Batchelor, Chair of the Committee and one of the members for Linton. Uh, Councillor Bradnam, please. Thank you. I'm Councillor Anna Bradnam and I represent Milton and Water Beach Ward. Thank you. Councillor Khan, please. So I'm Councillor Martin Khan and I represent Distant and Water Park. Thank you. Councillor Khan, your um, sound is very low. Perhaps you could bump it up a bit, please. 
Councillor Daunton, please. Um, yes, I'm Councillor Claire Daunton, and I'm one of the members for the Fenderton and Fullbourne Ward. All right, thank you. Councillor Fain, please. Good morning, Peter Fain, representing Shelford Ward. Thank you. Councillor Dr Hawkins. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tumi Hawkins and I represent Caldicott Ward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Milnes, please. Uh, good morning. Uh, Councillor Milnes representing Sawston. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Roberts, please. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, everybody. Deborah Roberts, Foxton Ward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Heather Williams, please. Good morning, Heather Williams and I represent the Mordens Ward. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dr Richard Williams, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'm Richard Williams. I'm the member for Whittlesford, Triplo, Heathfield and Newton. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Nick Wright. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Councillor Nick Wright, member for Caxton and Patlin. Thank you. So I can confirm that the meeting is quiet. Uh, if at any time a uh, member leaves the meeting, would they please make that fact known to me so that it can be recorded in the minutes? So members of the public are aware, if a councillor is absent for any part of the presentation of or debate about an agenda item, then they may not vote on that item. We have several public speakers today and I would just like to explain how public speaking will work. This meeting is being broadcast live by the Council's website. And public speakers are reminded that by participating in this meeting, you are consenting to being broadcast and to the use of the images and sound recordings for webcast and training purposes. You will each have three minutes to address the committee. When you start speaking, we will start the timer. Please ensure you switch the microphone on before you speak. Your time, when your time has elapsed, we will ask you to conclude your speech. Once you have finished speaking, we may wish to ask you questions. Please be concise in your response. If there are no more questions, you may leave the meeting and continue to watch via the webcast. Committee members are reminded that any questions to speakers should be for clarification purposes only. And the process for this shall be as follows. I shall ask if there are any questions if you do have questions, please ask to speak in the chat facility. The committee can only consider planning reasons for or against the application. The committee cannot consider general observations about the development site. The committee cannot consider, you know, I've done that bit, the committee cannot speak I'm sorry, I'll read that again. The committee cannot consider comments from public speakers made outside of their allotted speaking time. Therefore, I request that those registered do not interrupt outside of their time. Once the committee has heard from all speakers and planning officers, we will form views on uh, on the application. The planning committee will then vote. The outcome is decided by majority vote and in the event of a tie, I as chair have, I have a casting vote. When planning committee members vote, please can they ensure that they identify themselves and speak into the microphone so that the vote is understood by committee and those watching the webcast. Members are reminded they should indicate whether they are for against or abstain when their name is called. Um, I've had a request to try and have breaks at particular times during the course of this meeting. So um, the break times will be around about 11.30 for 10 minutes. 
at one o'clock for a lunch break of 30 minutes. And if we're still going at three o'clock, we will have another 10 minute break then. Um, clearly, there may be some, some flexibility in that, given where we are at uh, the time in the uh, debate. Right, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Senior, do we have any apologies? Thank you, yes, we have two apologies from Councillor Pippa Ailings and Councillor Judith Ripeth. And we have two substitutes today, which are Councillor Dr. Claire Dornton and Councillor Ryan Mills. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. <coughs> and can I just remind uh, everyone to turn off their cameras and microphones unless they are, are actually speaking, please. Uh, declarations of interest. Uh, do any members have declarations of interest? Um, yes, Chairman, if it's appropriate for me to speak here, it's Councillor Daunton. Um, uh, my comments come up in relation to item six in the papers. Um, so, um, as I understand it, it's appropriate for me to stand down from that item and not to take part in the discussion or the voting. OK, so you have a prejudicial interest on that particular item. Yes. OK, thank you very much for that. That's noted. We've got requests from Chairman from Heather Williams, Councillor Heather Williams yep. and yep. Councillor Deborah Roberts. Fine, thank you. Councillor Heather Williams, please. Thank you, Chairman. I have an interest in agenda item number seven, and as it has a, a direct visual impact on my father's home, um, the, I will not be taking part in that discussion at all. But I have um, nominated Councillor Nick Wright to speak in the local member capacity, as I'm unable to in this case. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. And Councillor Roberts, please. Um, thank you very much, Chairman. The Falmere item, I am a member of Falmere Parish Council who've debated it, but I come to this matter afresh. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Vice Chair, do we have any further declarations? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you, Chair. Right. I have a declaration in that uh, on the little Abington application, um, number of item five in that I have been present at parish council meetings where this matter has been discussed. I have not taken part or commented on this application and I'm coming to it afresh today. So if there's no more declarations of interest, uh, we'll move on to the substantive item. Now, um, Unfortunately, we do have a officer request um, for deferral on item nine, Falmir. Um, if you are agreeable members, I'd like to bring that forward as the first item in order to deal with that um, uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, can I just check with members if you're in agreement that I, I bring that forward? Agreed, Agree, Chairman. Is there anyone Agree. against? Agree. OK, thank you. I'll bring that forward. Uh, uh, I did see a note that Councillor Williams wished to speak. Is that? On the minutes. On the minutes. Yeah. All right, we haven't done the minutes, have we? No. <laughs> okay. Sorry, we're getting out of order. OK, we've uh, agreed to bring forward um, the Falmer item, item nine will now become item five. Um, before that, we should um, deal with the minutes. Um, the minutes are on pages one to eight of your agenda and are for the meeting was, which was held on the 13th of January. Uh, are you in agreement that I should sign these as a correct record? Now I have some speakers, I think, Vice Chair. Yes, you have uh, firstly Councillor Heather Williams. All right, Councillor Heather Williams, please. Thank you, Chairman. It's just in relation to page four. It says that I wasn't present and did not vote. However, I, I was present, but I abstained as I, I felt I didn't have enough information. Right, thank you we very much. I'm sure Mr. Chairman, that. do we need to check on which item? Was it item eight or item seven? 
Okay. Item seven, Chairman, right where there. it actually says the vote, that section. OK. okay. okay so we, thank you very much. And then Chairman Councillor Nicholas Wright wishes thank to speak. You. Councillor Wright, please. Uh, mine's just uh, 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 for a bit of clarity, Chairman. Uh, on page eight, we have the enforcement report minuted. Um, it says that we will have a regular update each month. Um, and I note in the enforcement report this time that has not happened uh, again. And I hope that you have been assured we're getting a verbal update in its replace. Thank you very much. Someone's telephone going. Right. OK, that's noted. Uh, any further speakers, Vice Chair? Vice Chair, do we have any further speakers on the minutes? Sorry, Chairman. Councillor Milnes has said he won't vote on the minutes because he was not at that meeting. Right, thank you very much, Ms. Councillor Milnes. Uh, I wasn't present at that meeting either, so I will not vote on it. But, uh, can I now move that these uh, minutes should be, um, with the adjustments made, uh, be a correct record of the meeting of the 13th of January? All right, anyone against? Anyone against? Right, thank you very much for the minutes. Chairman, are therefore agreed. Do we need to clarify which members are voting? Because some of the people here are substitutes. Yes. So right. do we need to? So, so it's only those who are present at that meeting on the 13th of January who should uh, vote. Um, since it, it isn't a disputed vote. I, I, I don't think there is particularly an issue there. Perhaps Mr Carter could just uh, advise us on that. Thank you, Chair. Uh, no, I think that's clear that um, only those members who were present uh, took part in the vote, councillors Milnes, uh, Daunton and yourself were not present. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I think that deals with the uh, minutes then. So we're now uh, going to deal with Falmer. This is on pages 117 to 124 of uh, your agenda papers. So um, I'll just introduce the item um, before. Mr. Carter um, advises us on the deferral arrangement. So this is reference 20 04223HFUL and it's a 20A Piper's Close Palmia. The proposal is a new access from London Road, an extension to the existing parking area to create an on site parking turning. The applicant is uh, it's the scene gentle. Uh, it's about oh. character and appearance. Um, this application is coming to the committee because the site is owned by South Cam's District Council. Uh, Mr. Carter uh, is going to make a request for a deferral of this. Uh, Mr. Carter, would you? Uh, explain why please. Thank you Chair, yes. Um, members, it's been brought to the attention of officers that an incorrect certificate of ownership uh, is displayed on the website for this application. Um, having regard to this, a new certificate needs to be signed and displayed and a consultation period undertaken following this. Um, I would like to apologise to the applicant and the committee for this error, which uh, should members agree to the deferral, officers would seek to rectify uh, before returning the matter to committee for decision. Um, the applicants and public speakers were informed uh, yesterday of this issue. Uh, so that's the reason, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carter. Um, so uh, I'd like to propose that we defer this. Could I have a seconder for that, please? I'll chairman, second that, Chairman. Right, thank you very much. Does anybody wish to speak to the deferral? Uh, Mr Senior, you've got your camera on. Chairman, as local member, I'm quite happy with the deferment. Right, thank you very much for that. 
Thanks, Robert. Um, Vice Chair, do we have any other people wishing to speak? Not at the present time. Thank you very much. Can I then go directly to a, a vote? Are we happy to uh, accept this deferral by affirmation? Agreed. 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 Right. Is anybody against? No. No one wishing to abstain? Fine. So that uh, item is therefore deferred. Um, and thank you very much. We will return to the regular agenda then, and the next item is Abington. This is on your agenda papers, uh, pages nine through to seventy-two. I will now introduce that item. So the reference. Uh, is S3921 19FL. It is at Bancroft Farm, Church Lane, Little Abington, Cambridge. The proposal is for the erection of six dwellings and the change of use and conversion of two agricultural barns to office space. Use uh, class B1A. Following the demolition of agricultural buildings and removal of hard standing and associated works. This is a resubmission of application S138819 FL. The applicant is uh, represented by the agents Cheffins. Um, the case officer will go through the key material considerations. This application is brought to committee um, because officer's recommendation is contrary to the Lavington Parish Council recommendation of refusal and referred to planning committee through the delegation meeting held on the 10th of November. The recommendation is for approval and the case officer is uh, Michael Sexton. Mr. Sexton, would you give us your presentation, please? Thank you. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Chair, if you could confirm that you're seeing a presentation on your screen, please. I am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we begin the presentation, just a couple of um, updates on the report itself. Um, paragraph 14. Um, I've written Great Abington Parish Council. Um, it obviously should be Little Abington Parish Council, so I do apologise for that particular typo and offer my um, particular apologies to uh, Little Abington Parish Council themselves. So apologies for that. In paragraph 154 of the report, which talks about the trees that are to be removed um, as part of the development, uh, trees that are identified as T3 and T5 are actually category B trees, which are of good quality. Uh, which is as they are referred to in paragraph 153 of the report. But in 154, I've kind of batched those two particular trees in with the category C lower quality trees. So just as a point of clarification there. And on to the presentation itself. Uh, yes, as the chair has said, this is an application for six dwellings and the change of use and conversion of two existing agricultural barns into office space. Um, and associated works at Bancroft Farm, Little Abington. Uh, the application site is marked out with this red line here and is fairly central uh, within the village of uh, Little Abington. Uh, important, I think, to draw attention to the particular constraints that are involved with this application. Um, here you'll see again the application, uh, application boundary. The site is, is wholly within the development framework boundary of Little Abington, which is marked by this dashed line, um, and more or less completely within the conservation area, uh, which is marked by this pink area. There is a small portion here that doesn't fall within the conservation area, but clearly part of its, its setting. Um, a key constraint is this air protected village immunity area, which is denoted by the solid pink area, and you'll note that part of the application site does fall within the protected village immunity area. There are two grade two, uh, two listed buildings uh, near to the site. To the south of the site is a grade two star listed church, and to the southeast of the site is a grade two 
uh, listed residential property. And these blue lines are the public rights of way. So a uh, particular note is this public right of way to the east of the site, which would afford additional views of the site that are available from the public street scene of Church, Church Lane. To provide some context um, to the area, just a few images to show you the site. This first image is looking north along Church Lane and you have the application site on the right hand side. This is one of the existing barns which is to be retained and converted. Uh, the second image is taken from West Field, which is a junction opposite the site, just up here on the first image, looking across into the site so you can see some of the existing structures and the flint wall along the, the, the highway. Uh, the top image here is taken from right at the top of Church Lane, where it joins with Bourne Bridge Road, and this is a view looking southeast uh, towards the application site in this area here. And behind it is the open land, which is designated as the protected village immunity area. The bottom image is just a view now looking south down Church Lane. So on the left hand side, again, you have the application site, the existing trees, and in the in the distance you have the uh, Church of St Mary the Virgin, the Great Two Star listed church, uh, which is shown a bit clearer further on. Um, existing properties opposite the application site uh, are shown in the top image here, predominantly uh, single story properties directly adjacent with some two story properties uh, further down Church Lane. And again, this lower image is, is again looking south down Church Lane. Here is the church you can see in the background with the existing barn of the application site here, which is to be retained um, and other structures close to the public highway. Uh, again, just for context, this is a view of the bottom of Church Lane looking east. Um, this is the, the listed residential property to the southeast of the application site, which is behind this building. And again, you've got a two storey form of development predominantly along this particular part of the street. Uh, the bottom image is just an existing view from the public footpath, which was shown on the constraints plan to the east of the site. So you have the church in the background here and the application site in this area here, and you can sort of see some of the existing buildings uh, within the site. So the application is proposing um, the erection of six dwellings, which are shown here as plots one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then the conversion of two existing barns. Uh, with this uh, into office use, with this barn here being the one which is, is evident in those street scene views you've just seen. And this junction here for context is the Westfield junction, which was also shown. And the area in the background here in the blue land is the protected village community area, which does also obviously come in here as shown on the constraints plan. I won't spend too much time going through the elevations because they've been part of the members committee back and available on the council's website. Um, but the general design approach has been to replicate an agricultural form um, of development. So they look as sort of converted buildings, which officers feel would be appropriate to the context of the site and the historic context of the site. Um, and that's achieved through their, their fairly modest scale and the particular detailings that you'll see around some of the fenestration, which, which can be secured by condition. Um, and some of the materials that are used, um, and again, door details just reflect the agricultural language in response to the site's context. So they are the five um, properties, three, uh, six properties, sorry, three of which will be single storey properties. And then you have uh, the two barns to be converted into office space. There's no, no change to their sort of form and scale. It's just really the fenestration and the finishing of those which are being converted, uh, adjusted as part of this development. So, Key material considerations are outlined on the front at the start of the officer report. These are most of them, but it's not the extensive list, but I thought these were probably the most pertinent ones to the committee debate today. Uh, principle of development, officers don't have an objection to the principle, it's, it's within the framework and there's policy support for residential development and office use within, within development frameworks. Um, the next three I've put stars next to, because I suspect these will be the key part of today's discussions, um, that is the impact of the development on the uh, protected village immunity area, the character of the area and heritage impact. Um, hopefully you'll appreciate in the report that these three aspects are balanced judgments that have been made by, by officers. Um, and then obviously other key considerations of, of biodiversity, landscaping trees, flood risk, highway safety and residential immunity, 
board which officers are satisfied uh, would accord with relevant policy. And that is it from me, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, members, any points of clarification, case officer? Uh, Chairman, I have a point of clarification, please. Right. Uh, Councillor Br Bradnam, please. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, sorry, two points, uh, Mr Sexton. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Um, I couldn't find uh, the diagram that shows the extent of overlap of the protected village amenity area on the actual site plan. So that's one thing I'd like to have clarified. And could you also clarify um, obviously, on the proposed site plan, there are the two barns, and I, I couldn't, wasn't able to find out which was barn A and which was barn B, and what was being planned for both of those. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Sexton, please. Yeah, certainly I can respond to that. Um, there, as part of the application, there isn't actually a plan that shows the site plan and the PVAA together I did provide one as appendix three to the committee report so you should have received that unfortunately it doesn't it doesn't show the site plan in terms of the layout but it does show the application uh, site boundary and the overlap with the PVAA and the report uh, talks about the degree of overlap um, and that I think plots two one and two do encroach slightly into uh, I'm trying to find would, a secret paragraph. Would it be possible, Mr. Sexton, to show us again your one of your early slides where you yes, showed, certainly. and I was trying to work out whether the PBAA goes just across the garden or whether it also includes the location of the house at plot two. Yeah, share this plan again. So this is the constraints plan, so you can see the application site boundary and the PVAA boundary. Um, I'm trying to find the relevant paragraph in my report, bear with me one second, but I've, on the basis of the measurements I took, I do believe there is a slight encroachment of the plots, plots one and two into that, uh, into the PVAA. I think um, it's your paragraph 80. Paragraph 80, yes. So the gardens for plots one and two would be solely within uh, the PVAA and about four metres of the actual built form of plots one and two would encroach into that area as well. So yes, that is paragraph 80 of the report. Uh, thank you. And so, so what we're seeing there then, the pink area of the PVAA actually would go over a portion of plot two, the building of plot two. Yes, that is correct. OK, thank you. <clears throat> and could you just uh, um, uh, clarify on the site plan. Uh, is barn A staying? Sorry, is barn A the one that um, is on the western side of the site adjoining the existing wall? In other words, the bottom of our picture and it will it stay in its full? Is that it, is the depiction the same as its current extent? So barn A is is the northern, not the northern oh. barn, the, this barn here and barn B is the uh, Southern Barn, which is um, yes, yeah, staying as seen. If I may jump between a few of these slides, so this building here that you see is is Barn B, and that is being retained as as is, obviously with upgrades to sort of fenestration and uh, materials and you know cleaning up the roof. Um, but that, yeah, that is Barn B, which is this this building here. So you can see the gen. This is the the wall and you, you can kind of see you've got that same form and this lower section here is is the bike store so yes barn barn b is the one that is currently on the bus in the highway and is retained in its scale thank you very much for that clarification mr sexton no right. um chairman we have um a question from councillor milnes sorry sorry chair i i did put in um that i wanted to clarify oh, sorry but... sorry i do apologize right. Is that uh, that's Councillor Richard Williams? Is it? Please? Is, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I did want to jump in because my my point actually follows on from from that. So it's, it's a good point to raise it. Um, just it, it in I had a question about the size of the encroachment with the PV AA because the report from paragraph sixty five and eighty three I think says the encroachment is zero point zero two, but it it 
Uh, by my calcul, well, at least my, me trying to work it out, it's not 0 0.02, it's 2%, not 0 0.02%. Um, so I was wondering if we could just get a clarification on that, because it's 600 metres out of 39,000 square metres. Um, so it'd be grateful if we could just clarify the size of the encroachment. Um, and and I, I just had a point of clarification on the, the parking issue um, and the, the office space. Um, the officer's report says that the, the floor space is approximately 173 um, square metres um, from which you calculate the parking space. Some of the public representations say 200 metres, so I'm, I'm just wondering how, 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 how much margin there is around approximately 173 um, as what it, what it will actually be. Um, so that, I'd be grateful for clarification on those. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council Members. Uh, yes, I think my maths has let me down on that first point, and it would be not 0.2%. Not it's having rerun the calculations, it's sort of 1.5228%. So 1.5 or 2% or encroachment in terms of the application boundary encroaching into the overall area of the, the PVAA. So that's that's 1.5%. Um, the, the office space What's actually being proposed as office floor space is around 175 square metres. Um, my interpretation of, of local representation is that the area marked as a bike store, as part of which is part of Farm B, has been included in that overall floor space. So there probably is 200 square metres worth of, of floor space as part of the development. 175 of that is for the actual office use, and then there's 25 square metres worth of existing floor space but that's being used as a bike store not office space so that that's kind of separate to working out the number of parking spaces that are required right thank you chairman we have a question from councillor brian milnes yeah councillor milnes please thank you chair um so i came to this late as a substitute um and um it appears to me that the uh, one of the principal issues here is uh, how this sits in its location, how it impacts visual uh, amenity or uh, visual um, presence in the village. Um, and I, I haven't seen anywhere in the documentation any visualisations of what people will be able to see from various positions. So reference has been made to the, the footpath across the PVAA. Um, is is it correct that I haven't missed some sort of visualizations from the developer? That's That's true. Through you, Chair, there's no standalone visual plan that's been provided. Within the heritage statement, there are there are some sort of early mock-ups of how these properties would sit when viewed from the, the public right of way, largely in, in assessing how those may impact on the setting of the church. The application has undergone several revisions and has been reduced in scale, so the only visuals present within that heritage statement are sort of now outdated. So no, you've not you've not missed anything, and I don't have any of those to hand. Otherwise, I, I would have included those within my presentation. Yes, I mean, I, would, I, I assumed that that's what you'd have done. So um, I, I just think it has probably made our job rather more difficult today uh, that the developers haven't sought to do that as it's such critical elements of the application. So thanks for the confirmation that we don't have that. Thank you. Vice Chair, any further speakers? Uh, no, we have no further speakers, Chairman. OK. So thank you very much for that, Mr Sexton. Uh, we'll move on to public speakers. Um, is uh, Mr Tony Orgy with us this morning? Yes, I am, John. Can you hear me? Yes, I can indeed. Can't see you yet. Uh, oh, um, I, I, I wasn't going to put the camera on because of internet connections. Just okay. to make okay. Fair enough then. All right, uh, I'm sure you know the form. You've got yes. three minutes whenever you're ready. OK, well, thank you very much. I'm speaking on behalf of at least a dozen households. We accept the principle of development on this site, but object to the detailed application. First of all, part of the application site is outside the farmyard and within a protected village and minty area. And in fact, part of both dwellings, of dwellings on both plus one and two are within the PVAA, as are the whole of the gardens. 
The applicant's heritage statement states that the main vista across the open fields to the east, that is the PVAA, is at the junction of Church Lane and Bourne Bridge Road. This is an open view much cherished locally that will be particularly impacted on by this application and you can see from the plans, particularly the map on page 71 of the agenda papers, that the width of this open aspect is significantly reduced by this application. Secondly, there's a negative impact on the appearance and character of the conservation area. The layout of that area of Church Lane Little Abington, immediately opposite the application site, is described in the applicant's heritage statement as follows. The modern housing development to the west of the site comprises houses and bungalows set well back from the road. This has enabled substantial street trees to be retained. That's paragraph 6.2 of the heritage statement. And paragraph 6.3 the layout and density of the existing built form means the trees and hedges are prominent in the street scene. However, dwellings one and six are not only side on, but also within two or three metres of the road. The side elevations and gable ends of these two plots are six metres high, so will dominate views towards the listed church and makes the dwellings visually intrusive. So together with the removal of almost all the trees from the site and plot three being clearly visible from Church Lane, this can only lead to a significant adverse and negative impact on the character and appearance of the conservation area. The street scene on the eastern side of Church Lane would bear no relationship in terms of character and appearance to the adjacent western side. And thirdly, about trees and biodiversity, the proposed development will lead to the loss of eight of the 10 trees on the application site that are in the Arboricultural Report. The proposed development would have an adverse effect on the ecology and biodiversity in and close to the application site. The site attracts at least 19 species of birds, seven species of bats forage around the site. Replacement of pollution absorbing trees and hedges on this narrow site with the built environment and service road is detrimental to the local eco ecosystem, particularly the bats. The gardens of dwellings two, three, four and five are small and lack depth. These houses therefore appear prominent when viewed from the public footpath crossing the PVAA and have an adverse impact on the character, amenity and tranquility of the PVAA. Because the houses on this eastern edge are so close to the boundary, there would be considerable light overspill across the PVAA with consequential uh, detrimental effect on wildlife. I would like to conclude with an image that I've sent to Michael Sexton, and that's uh, the house on plot one, a visualisation, an amended version with text, which brings out three points. One of which is that the, I want you to look at the bulk and massing of the house so close to the road. Note that the gable ends are particularly prominent in the street scene and that all trees on the house side of the road, except two beyond the house, would be removed if you approved this planning application. So uh, local residents... Can, can you bring it to a conclusion? You yes, yes, yes. Yes. And okay. so we object to this detailed planning application for the reasons set out above and others offered in the parish councils and local district councillors' representations. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Sexton, did you have that, that picture available? I do, Jan. I'm happy to share if you wish me to share, display that. Please. Yeah. So you should now be able to see on your screen a Word document with, a, with an image, which is obviously we've covered that there are no formal visuals provided with this application. This is obviously a, a you know a mock up from a. OK, OK, we've seen that then. Right, let's, Thank you, Chair. OK, members, please note that but, uh, not an official document. Oh, hang on. Now, it's that, gone again. Yes, because we're moving on. Because is, is there any points of clarification, please? Vice Chair, do we have anyone? Chairman, is it possible to just show that image again? I was just trying to read the text and it disappeared. 
Uh, Mr Sexton, can we put that up again, please? All right, it's very quick. Apologies, I was perhaps a bit trigger happy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, apologies, it's, it's refusing to share. Now bear with me one second. The text was what I read out, actually. actually yes, I was thinking yes. it would have been helpful to have it up while you were speaking. Sorry, Chairman. Here we go. So I just closed and opened it again, so it should now should now be back on your screens, members. OK, thank you. Thank you. Is that part yeah. one? All right, thank you. Uh, so you can see there, so this is provided. Um, yeah. Mr. Audrey. And no. Chairman, could I ask for some clarification? Yes, well, I'm just about to do Thank so. You. So, uh, Councillor Bradman, do you want to? Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, um, I just wanted to understand is where the plot one is proposed to be, that currently is not a wall, is it? It's just an open, an open fence, I think, is it, towards the um, PVAA? Who are you asking clarification from? Sorry, could I ask clarification from Mr. Orgy? Right. Thank you, Chair. Yes, you, you, you've got trees and shrubs and then you've got a, a fence, of, a low fence behind there, yes. Well, that's easier, thank you. Right. So it's currently just trees, but it would then be the wall of the house. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Chairman. OK, right. Uh, any other points of clarification? Vice Chair, oh, um, are we happy? Chairman, no? yes, Councillor Hawkins would like to ask. Right, Councillor Dr Hawkins, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just to ask um, Mr Orji, good morning, Mr Orji. Good to see you again or hear you. Um, I think you mentioned that all but is it two of the trees on the site were going to be um, removed, but that doesn't simply what is stated in paragraphs 153 and 154, which states that the trees of good quality that are staying are T3 to T5, T7 and 13 to 17. Is that your understanding? I made the same mistake that I think you've made, and that is that you've assumed <laughs> that trees T1 to T17 are all in the application site, and they're not. Trees okay. 11 to T16 are north of the application site, they're not in the application site, and T3 T17 is beyond the southeastern edge of the site. Okay. So there are only 10 trees listed in the um, our boricultural report that are actually on the site itself and the proposal is to remove all of them except T4 mm -hmm. and T7 although T7 would have its uh, crown reduced so only two of the trees would re identified in the arboricultural uh, report would mm -hmm. remain on that site everything else would be removed that's okay. my understanding all right, thanks. Thanks for that clarification. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Vice Chair, do we have anybody else? No, we have no further requests, Chairman. OK, Mr. Aldry, thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you. If we could take down that uh, slide, please. Good. And we now move on to the uh, applicant's agent, please. Uh, John Jennings. Mr. Jennings, are you with us this morning? Yes, good. Yes, thank you. We can see you. Well, no, thank you. Um, you. You know the form, I'm sure. You've got three minutes, uh, so when when you're ready. OK, th thank you. First, I'd like to thank you for provide, providing me with the opportunity to speak to you regarding my client's application at Bancroft Farm, Church Street, Little Abington. This application has been formulated following a design workshop and extensive pre-application and post-submission discussions with planning and conservation officers. We consider that this development will enhance the sterilic site within the Little Abington Conservation Area and will not detract from the setting of Little Abington Church. This is confirmed by the support which has been received from both Historic England and the Council's Conservation Officer. 
with the design of the buildings, as Michael has quoted, seeking to replicate the former agricultural, agricultural use of the site. The scale of the development at no more than 15 dwellings per hectare re reflects the care that has been taken to ensure that the constraints associated, associated with the site, in particular trees and residential amenity, are not compromised. The significant proportion of single storey dwellings will ensure that the properties are well suited to the needs of the elderly and less able. able. It's interesting to note that no technical objections to this scheme, in, in particular with regards to flood risk and drainage, highways and contamination, ecology and trees. It is acknowledged that there is minimal encroachment upon the protected visual amenity area at, as Michael's clarified, 2% of this area. However, it must be acknowledged this designation does not preclude development. And a view, uh, this is a view which has been confirmed by officers during pre-application discussions. Furthermore, the re regeneration of this derelict site and the associated landscaping scheme will actually result in enhancements to the PVAA. There has been considerable comment regarding the provision of the small office buildings which are to be, to be provided. These barns do not readily lend themselves to, the, to conversion to residential use. The barns are to be owned and managed by the applicants and they will be operated small startup offices with preference being given to firms which have a local connection, thereby maximising employees who can cycle to the site rather than relying on the private car. In view of the, of the above, it is requested that the committee approve the application in line with your officer's recommendation. I'm also happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Jennings. Uh, members, do you have any points of clarification? Yes, Chairman, I have one, please. Yeah, Councillor Bradman, then, please. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr Jennings. Uh, I just wanted to understand uh, we understand from our report, and I can't remember where I've read it, um, that the office, the offices are likely to generate, and I can't remember if it was 12 in both A, in a, to a total of 12 employees in A and B, or 12 in A and a different number in B. Um, but either way, um, I'm I, I'm alarmed to see that amount of development on the site in addition to the houses. Can you just explain what your justification was for that? The, the, the level of, of parking as, and travel associated with the barns, I think will be more, will be, will actually be limited. I mean, they're not, they're not large, they're startup offices. People, as, and as I said, there is a, a reason, there is a local uh, a preference to use for these to be offered to, to local firms so people can travel to the car using alternative modes to the private car. I think also in, in the way that things are changing, uh, as acknowledged by Michael in his report, I think people will come to the office less. So in reality, that there will be less people in the office at any, any one time. And also um, the second point was um, the concern about the likely impact of um, properties two, three and four on the PVAA because they're very close to the boundary. What's your understanding of that likely impact? I mean, there is, I mean, there is a knowledge, there is, there is, there is an impact on the PVAA, but as, as I've said, it's, it's a very minimal impact. Also, this scheme at the moment, this scheme will allow uh, significant landscaping on the boundaries of the site, additional tree planting that will compensate for the, for the, for the minimal harm to the PVAA. It is very clear the PVAA does not act as a total constraint to development. It does allow sympathetic development. This is a, this is a very small part of the site where single storey development is being proposed. Thank you. Um, we have a chairman, we have a question from Councillor Richard Williams. Thank you. Councillor Williams, please. Oh. Thank you very much. Um, can I uh, just just again pick up on one of those points? Um, can you clarify if the site owners have done any work in terms of um, scoping out the businesses that might use those residential units? I mean, I obviously I, I'm sure they would try to find local firms, but um, do they have anybody in mind? Have they done any kind of work to to look at who might be there and have? Have you thought about the sort of um, the, the different transport options people could use? I, I would imagine that the village isn't very well served by public transport, for example. I mean, there is, I mean, there's, there's there's fairly good public transport using, obviously using the, uh, I think it's the 0505. There is also, I mean, as seen within the scheme, there's extensive uh, covered uh, cycle right. parking provi provided. Sorry. Um, so there's, right. 
Uh, yeah, sorry. Can, can I just get the clarification about the the point about whether any work's been done to scope up the businesses that might use it? Yeah, I mean, Sheffins has obviously, obviously got a, a commercial team as well as as well as a planning and development team. We have taken some advice from them with regards to uh, the, the likelihood of small small firms taking this up, and also the, the applicant itself is very committed to seeing small startup firms occupying the, this this type of office space, very much almost like hot de hot desking as well. Right, thank you. Right, Chair, do we have any other? We have no further requests for clarification, okay. Chairman. Okay, thank you. So thank you very much. For thank you. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Uh, if we could move on then to the Parish Council representative, and that's Councillor she Sheila Bolden. Are you with us this morning, Sheila? Yes, I am with you this morning. Good. Good, Good morning, Good everybody. Well. <coughs> okay. So, um, could you just adjust it? We're only seeing half your face at the moment. Looks all right from here. It, Chairman, I can see all of Sheila Bolton. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Maybe so that's you, a good thing. <laughs> OK, no, that's fine. So uh, you know the form then. Yeah, uh, it's three minutes uh, okay, fine. When, when you're ready. Thank you. OK, um, <clears throat> well, Little Abington Marriage Council objects to the planning application but it must be said not from a NIMBY position as the council does agree that an appropriate number of housings meeting the needs of the village would enhance the area. The residents were consulted regarding the housing development of six dwellings and, the, and it was supported. However offices were never envisaged in the proposal as Bancroft Farm is situated in a rural, residential and conservation area, the design, it is no longer, that area is no longer farmland, so the houses should fit in around the residential area. Development of a mixed use does not appear, in a, it, it does appear inappropriate. The design is not visual, is suitable in that a courtyard layout is out of character with the surrounding houses which face forward and back from the road. The inclusion of offices based around a narrow spine road will exacerbate the flow of the traffic. With regards to the safety, we believe the inadequate office parking, the likely traffic from visitors and staff will contribute to a hazard of two-way traffic. In addition, due to the design of the narrow carports and possible residential parking on the Spine Road, it will spill onto Church Lane, as well as being a narrow road, has two dangerous blind bends causing further hazard. Parking on Church Lane itself will create obstruction and cause problems for pedestrians cyclists and other road users. Cycling is becoming in, an important option. <clears throat> the GCP is proposing to route cyclists through the village, which includes passing this development. Consideration needs to be given to St Mary's Church at the end of the corner of Church Lane. The congregation travels from other villages also weddings and funerals. It is the cemetery for both Great and Little Abington. This all adds to footfall, hunting and traffic. Flooding is, off, is an issue adding to the road hazards. In the outside the church, it is often flooded after heavy rain. So we have consulted with the residents group and fully support their presentation. Our concerns regarding the PVAA will be represented by the residents group and district councillors. So for the reason, these reasons and those referred to in the residents and district councillors presentation, Little Abington Parish Council objects to this planning application. Right, thank you very much for that. Um, just a bit of procedure. I should have asked you in the first place that, that uh, need to confirm that you 
have permission of the parish council to speak on their behalf. Yes, I do. I am the chair of the yeah. Abington Parish Council. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Vice Chair, do we have any yes. points of clarification? Yeah. Yes, Chairman, we have a request from Councillor Hawkins. Right. Councillor Dr Hawkins, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Bolden. Um, just um, on the issue of the um, the business units. Um, I mean, I live in a village myself, and I know that there are uh, local businesses who are looking for small spaces uh, within the village. Um, are you aware at all of any businesses that might use that sort of a space? No, frankly, no. Uh, it's not. The Little Abington is such a small rural area. I mm. can't envisualise what sort of offices or businesses would want to be. You know, the access if they, they need uh, deliveries and people coming to and from, it's, it's very restricted then. OK, I mean, I, I understand that, but I'm thinking more of the, you know, the one person business or the two person business who just require an office space that they can't. They don't have in their own homes. And there are many of those types of businesses in South Cambridgeshire generally. Um, and I know for a fact that um, we have a need for small units that maybe startups or, you know, the next next stage of businesses might be looking for. But in any event, thank you for that clarification. And I note um, the report uh, from the parish council, which is quite exhaustive. So thank you for that. Uh, very informative. Um, but in terms of just sticking to the business area, I mean, the guidelines, um, the planning guidelines requires a parking space per, I think it's 25 uh, square meters of office space. And eight is proposed, which actually, in terms of our guidelines, it does meet the requirements. Would that, in some way, <laughs> go to mitigating your concern about parking? Um, does it take into account people visiting those businesses or deliveries to those businesses? Um, I mean, I don't know how it's been formulated, but the guideline requires 20, you know, one parking space about 25 meters square of business space, and that has been met. So I would imagine that that includes it. So that's why I'm asking you if that will at least mitigate your concerns um, about the parking, because it does meet the guidelines. The, yes, but I was trying to join the parking of the offices mm -hmm. compared with the parking of the residents on that spine road. Right. You know. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, thanks very much. Um, and our next request is from Councillor Wright. Right, Councillor Wright, please. Thank you, Chairman, and good morning. Uh, my, my question is a little bit about uh, Little Abington. Uh, I have been there in the past and I was wondering if you could help me. Um, we've seen pictures of the site and everything. Could you tell me about facilities in the village? Do you have a shop? Do you have a pub? Um, and this is to do, you know, with the um, the work side of the employment of the um, site, the, the industrial buildings. Uh, is that what do you have in Little Abington that could support these businesses? We have one village shop, we have one pub, um, we have a hairdresser's and a village institute. That's Thank you. What is That's very village. helpful. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, and our next request is from Councillor Richard Williams. All right. Councillor Williams, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to pick up on that and the point I, I made earlier. Um, it'd be very useful to know um, from the Parish Council if there's any public transport in the way of buses. Um, I, 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 I don't think I know there's no train because I live near enough to know that, but uh, is the village well served by um, public transport? We have one bus service which um, does come through 
the village. Mm. Um, basically, that's it. How often does it does it does the bus come through? I think it's uh, under normal circumstances. It's hourly. It used to be more mm. at um, mornings and evenings, but it's hourly. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. And and Chairman, I have a request for clarification. Right. Councillor Bradburn, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Mrs. Bolden. Um, I wanted to ask um, to the the trees that are likely to to remain on the site. Sorry, as 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 others have said, we've seen photographs. But is it your impression that if the trees if the trees were felled as planned uh, for this development, with the exception of, I understand, two, is that right? Just two remaining on the site. Um, I just wanted to understand, is it your impression that would significantly impact the um, the uh, character of the street scene? Yes, it would. Okay, thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any more speakers, Vice Chairman? Uh, no, that's all we have so far, Chairman. Um, OK, thank you very much, Mrs. Bolton, for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if we could move on to one of the local members, then please. Is Councillor Henry Batchelor with us, please? I am, Chairman. Morning. Good morning. Thank you. Um, Councillor Wright, you've got your camera on. Thank you. Nice to see you as always. But <laughs> OK, uh, so Councillor Bachelor, uh, I'm sure you know the form. You've got three minutes um, when you're ready. Thank you. Yeah, not my first time. <laughs> so, Morning, everybody. There are just two points I'd like to make against this application. And just for clarity, I'll be speaking in support of the parish council and the local residents in asking for refusal of this application. The two points I'd like to make uh, have been covered, but I will go into them in a bit more detail. The first one is the intrusion into the PBAA, and the second is the damage to the conservation area that the application is set within. So point one on the PBAA, we've seen a couple of images today showing the extent of the intrusion into the protected area. Just to, just to absolutely clarify that it's not only the gardens of the houses, but the buildings themselves that would be intruding into this area. Um, to make an area protected as the PVAA is, it must have gone through a process. And my view is I think it would be a, a mistake to do anything to undo this process and damage this protection. PVAA is protected for a reason and to approve a planning application that would have a detrimental effect on this, in my view, is something this authority should be very cautious about doing. And if they do do only in exceptional circumstances. My second point on the conservation area, I'm going to be referred to the conservation officer's comments, which I believe are in section 16 of the officer's report. Uh, as with PBAOs, conservation areas are protected, meaning whatever is built there should be in keeping with the other properties in the vicinity and that the harm of the development should absolutely not outweigh the benefit. There is an argument that these, pro these proposed units do not do this. The layout and style is, in my view, out of keeping with the surrounding area as the properties do not face onto Church Lane and are not set back from the road, as all others in this area are. Also, the, the appearance would be different, and we've also seen some images regarding the heights of the units. Um, I also, um, again, there are some officers' comments in, that, in section 16 relating to this. However, the main issue, I think, is with this whole proposal, the impact it will have on the nearby church, which is grade two listed. The development would impact into the view on the church, both literally by physically obstructing it and in terms of the style of the development as what is proposed differs from what is already there and would not look similar. The conservation officer refers to this in their comments and confirms that development would, res would result in a detrimental impact on the setting of the church, which the officer suggests could be remedied by heavy conditioning. I would argue that the harm caused by this development outweighs the public positive benefit of approving it. And instead of having a raft of conditions attached to an approval, my view is that it should just be refused. And just as a PS, I think the parish uh, council chairman mentioned that, you know, Abington have taken a lot of development over the last few years and in Grace, Abington have actually uh, worked with developers to approve three large schemes, circa 100 houses, and they actually worked with the developers on those schemes to get something that's mutually beneficial for both parties. 
and all of those applications came to committee with parish council support. I think we can all agree that's how development should be done and I don't think it has been here so I would argue in the application's current form it's not acceptable, it could be better and I'd ask for it to be refused. Thank you Chair. All right, thank you very much. Members, any points of clarification for the councillor? We don't have any requests so far, Chairman. Right. Ah, we've just had one from, um, ah, they're coming in. Councillor Hawkins. Right, Councillor Dr Hawkins, please. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Councillor Bachelor Henry. <laughs> um, the, at the moment, from all I can see of the design, the layout of the um, of the proposal, it seems to be uh, keeping to the traditional type of farmyard layout that is currently there. Are you saying that that is not acceptable and it needs to be similar to modern housing? That's on the uh, opposite side. So yes, so I'm referring to the, the actual layout of the development. If you look mm -hmm. up and down Church Lane, all houses are fronted onto Church Lane, whereas mm -hmm. the houses that border the road in the proposed development do not. And also the houses are actually set back from the road as well, keeping the leafy street scene as it is, whereas mm -hmm. the frontages of the, sorry, the sides of the houses that will be seen from the road would be essentially bordering the border in Church Lane and we'd lose that leafy scene. That, that is my point though, isn't it? In that you currently have uh, a couple of barns right up along the flint wall. Yeah. And, the, you know, there are also existing buildings on that side that are in a sort of courtyard, farmyard type layout. And that is what this development is emulating. So Indeed. it's so that is trying to keep the heritage of that site, isn't it? I think if it, it was going to remain as a as a farmyard, then yes. But as it's mm -hmm. moving into a residential development, i.e., uh, a close, as I think it's been proposed, mm -hmm. then I think that I would argue that the residential element of it would be out of keeping. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much, Chairman. We have a request from Councillor Fane. Right, Councillor Fane, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, two questions for Councillor Batcher, if I may. The first is. On the, the concern about the PVAA, Mr Jennings for the uh, applicants confirmed or that the, the uh, PVA is not necessarily incompatible with development, including uh, buildings on that. Um, also, you referred to the assessment of the conservation officer, paragraph 16 in particular. Um, and I wonder if you'd like to comment on what he said there that um, you referred to an enhanced landscape buffer along Church Lane between the new the, the roadside and the new dwelling, together with the retention of trees either side. That was not the impression that we had from the illustration that was put up following uh, Councillor Orgy's presentation earlier on. Um, I don't know whether you're in a position to comment on that. So, one second. So, sorry, what was the first question, Councillor? The first question was whether uh, development including buildings is necessarily incompatible oh, yeah, with no, a PVAA. So yeah obviously building can occur in a PVAA but I think my point was it would need to be in it would need to be the right kind of application it would, the circumstances would need to be I think exceptional to to build inside these areas uh, and I, I you know I think my view is it's such a small area that's encroaching in you know the development could be redesigned to not encroach into the PVAA at all. Um, regarding your second point is there, there will be landscaping buffers, um, albeit I believe the design is to uh, is to not have them in front of the houses and not between the road and the units. I mean, if that's if that's incorrect, I'm sure someone will tell me. Is that it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Chairman, we have a, an offer to speak from the case officer. Do we? Right. Yeah, um, he says he's happy to share the landscape plan to explain. OK, fine. Mr Sexton, would you like to share that with us? Thank you, Chair. I thought it might help uh, Councillor Batcher with, with Councillor Fain's question if I share the site plan, just to clarify the, the siting of plot one, obviously against the visual that was shown by the local resident. But um, 
obviously acknowledging that several trees are removed, there is uh, a landscape buffer proposed with some additional, uh, obviously more low level planting, um, as you can see on this plan, um, up to where you get to the existing flint wall. So if that helps in uh, Councillor Batcher uh, clarifying his points, I'm happy to leave that on screen. Sure, yeah, that does help, absolutely. Um, I think, as you mentioned, it'll be low level um, bordering. So, you know, it is some way to alleviating the situation, albeit I think not, not ideal from the from the local perspective. All right, thank you very much. Uh, any other points? Uh, we've no other requests to speak, yep. Chairman. OK, so thank you very much, Councillor, for that contribution. Thank you. Uh, I'm the other local member, but uh, I would like to reserve my comments until later in the debate. OK, thank you. Uh, so that's the public speaking uh, is finished. So we can now move to the debate. So who would like to start proceedings? Have any takers? Uh, yes, Chairman. <coughs> we have uh, Councillor Nick Wright has Councillor asked Wright. to speak. Okay, thank you. Councillor Wright, please. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, uh, this is an interesting, really interesting development. Um, but I'm not sure that they've quite got it right at the first attempt. Um, I I support mixed development, particularly on farm sites. Um, all farms, you know, in their history have employed uh, large numbers of villagers, and for the history, it is important to have employment on farm sites, um, particularly for supporting local facilities. It keeps people working and using those local facilities in the daytime rather than just turning it into a, a commuter belt uh, uh, with everybody departing in the morning to work somewhere else. However, with this application, to me, it doesn't look like proper mixed development. I would prefer to see the development being attached to the houses, the, uh, the, the use, the office use being attached to the houses in the form of more live work units, you know, and if there's anything that this lockdown over the last couple of years and pandemic has showed us is that uh, people need offices adjacent to their houses. And I think, you know, as you know, our policies move slowly, but live work units are so uh, sensible now. And I prefer to see the, the offices attached to each house so that the mixed development is absolutely true. And then you, that really does tie the number of uh, cars and that going to each property. Uh, it limits it massively uh, in that you haven't, you're not bringing in new businesses from elsewhere. Um, this is uh, a site that's going to go for development. You know, I think everybody's clear on that. And it's very important that because of um, its situation, you know, in the conservation area, uh, close to the church, that they get it absolutely right. And I would like to see the applicants working much closer with the objectors. All of uh, Tony Orgy's points, beautifully put, very sensible. And, you know, the applicants need to go away, look at what's come forward in this meeting, and come forward with another application that meets the support of the parish council and the objectors, and that is possible. Uh, so uh, those are my thoughts. Thank you, Chairman. All right, thank you very much for that. Vice Chair, do we have further speakers? Uh, yes, our next speaker, ca uh, Chairman, is Councillor Milnes. Uh, I thought Councillor Fain had put his uh, name down. Oh, there. sorry, I do apologise. Yes, you're right, Councillor Fain. OK, Councillor Fain, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I accept what um, Mr Jennings said on behalf of the applicants, that this proposal would enhance a derelict site. Um, my strength of feeling on that is I haven't done a specific site visit here, but that is my impression. Um, I think the courtyard layout retains the existing uh, respect to the fact that this is a, a former farmyard. 
there is this question of encroachment onto the PVAA. I am not sure how significant that is, and I do accept what the applicant said that that can be compatible, even building, uh, putting buildings on the PVA can be compatible with its designation. Um, I, I respect the way the applicants have tried to reflect the existing nature of the site and to retain existing buildings where possible. As to the rest of my feelings, I very much support what Councillor Nick Wright said um, just now um, about employment on farm sites and the importance of live work units, which um, will of course retain some employment in the village, which will help support local facilities, reduce distance to work and so on. But I also feel inclined to support what Nick Wright said, um, that the applicants have not quite got it right at the first attempt. And I'm particularly concerned about the impact of plot one, which is not only, I think, partially within the PVAA, but comes very close to Church Lane and would appear to dominate it, uh, as illustrated by uh, Councillor Orji. So I'm, I'm wondering at the moment whether this is good enough to approve. Um, I'm inclined to think it is and that we should approve this application. All right, thank you very much. Chairman, our next speaker is Councillor Hawkins. I think the Councillor Milne said, didn't it? <laughs> Sorry, I do apologise. Yes, correct. Yes, correct. Okay. Councillor Milne, please. You, you had me all hesitant there. <laughs> so um, I believe, uh, and somebody can connect, correct me if I'm wrong, this isn't really the first attempt because there's been um, substantial conversations with our planning team um, and the heritage statement, I think, was the, a revised version, so there's been some adjustments. I think the uh, the applicants has missed a trick here. Uh, if we're reliant on um, uh, Councillor Orji um, uh, doing a presentation to show where Unit uh, 1 uh, would live, um, which may or may not have been accurate on the on the site plan I have in front of me, I see a row of hedges um, in between uh, the road and uh, the, the building, which would give some uh, shielding. Um, and I think, um, you know, we're, we're dependent on uh, our imaginations for seeing how this might uh, look in practice. And I think that uh, is limiting uh, for sure, uh, particularly in relation to the views um, uh, towards the church uh, from the PVAA. I'm not sure that really losing 2% of the PVA to gardens and uh, a small amount of the building is uh, particularly pertinent. Um, but uh, it clearly was, uh, this, this site was developed to look like a conversion of farm buildings. And uh, clearly the aspiration is to have it look like a former um, agricultural uh, site uh, or a farming uh, farmer site and I've lived in such a, a, a development um, with um, bungalows alongside which uh, work really uh, quite well. So I think some of the fears that the parish council and local members have expressed is probably unfounded but difficult to rebut in the uh, lack of visualisations. Uh, I, from my own experience, I'd probably uh, support this application. Uh, there's a lot of work being done um, uh, cooperatively between uh, the council and the developers, uh, but I'm uh, rather sad that um, that work hasn't taken the parish council and local members with it. Thank you. Thank you. So, Chairman, our next speaker is request to speak is from Councillor Hawkins. Councillor Dr Hawkins, please. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, my points are sort of firstly on, on, on the issue of the office space. Um, I think as I've alluded to, I, I, I'm, I am in support of having uh, office space on this development. I think it is something that we need. And as has been pointed out, obviously, you know, COVID has shown that we do need office space. And even before that, we had realized 
uh, in the district that we do have a deficit of small business spaces that startups can use. So I am happy um, to see uh, some space made available uh, for small businesses. And I know, I mean, we we have here in my village uh, potential for, um, you know, the garage up the road where the owner did a quick survey of uh, of the village and he had more takers <laughs> than, than he could support with, you know, potentially um, a lot of small businesses going, yes, I would like a space, I would like a space. So let's not underestimate the need that there is even in small villages. Um, I'm not sure I like the idea of live workspaces. That's not what's in front of us today. Uh, what's in front of us is a separate office space. And I think live work units kind of limits the market uh, for those buildings. And a, a separate office space actually offers more flexibility whilst still supporting uh, local businesses. Um, the other concern that uh, we're looking at here is the intrusion into the PVAA. I actually have policy NH11 uh, in front of me and it reads protected village amenity areas are identified on the policies map where development will not be permitted within or adjacent to these areas if it would have an adverse impact on the character, amenity, tranquility or function of the village. Now, obviously, if you if you look at uh, paragraphs 86 and 90, uh, this impact has been assessed uh, by officers. Yes, it intrudes into 2% of the um, uh, of the PVAA. But at that point, the question is, how much weight do we attach to that impact? And that I think is what we need to assess. And as far as uh, the uh, the impact goes, we know that it is not significant. Um, so in that respect, you know, with what it is, I would say that, you know, that that level um, uh, I would tend to support as in the uh, as in the report. There is uh, the issue of trees and biodiversity. There will be, as we have been shown, a hedge around um, plot number one, which will still give a green view uh, along that road. And let's not forget the, the 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 layout as it is now actually has a in a couple of the bands adjacent to the road without um, you know along the wall without without any greenery there. But from what I've seen, there is um, you know the the plan to have uh, those hedges which will still keep the greenery and the biodiversity around that area. I note the concern about the trees being removed, but if you look at the trees officers report, they are of low quality. And uh, the T4, T7 and 17, which are going to be retained, um, you know, have gone through the checks and balances by our trees officer. So we need to take that into account in making our decision. Um, I've talked about office space and parking. It does meet the guidelines and, you know, we will be very, we should be wary of not taking that into account um, in terms of how we decide whether or not to support this application. I mean, from what I have seen, um, you know, whilst there are concerns, I think a lot of those have been met actually. And I'm looking at the, uh, the uh, parish council's report I've read it in detail and I think on balance, um, I would be likely to support this application unless I hear otherwise. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Chairman, the next request to speak is from Councillor Richard Williams. I thought Councillor Roberts would go. No, Councillor Richard Williams is okay. next. Is it? Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Richard Williams, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I, I agree with a lot of the comments that uh, Councillor Wright made earlier, so I won't, um, I, I won't, I won't rehearse those in the interest of time. Um, I'll just pick up on on a, on a few specific points. Um, <sighs> policy NH11 is important, I think, to me. I think, as, as Councillor Hawkins has just said, in the, in the protected village amenity area. I mean, I think it's worth 
bearing in mind that policy in its full context, I mean, paragraph 639 of the local plan um, says that, you know, um, PVA, PVAAs are important and should not be developed, quote, paragraph 640 um, talks about them as being um, important to um, retain. I mean, looking at the policy itself, which Councillor Hawkins has very kindly um, read out to us, and of course she's, she's quite right in, in, in terms of saying that there is that qualification and it says um, they shouldn't be developed um, if it would have an adverse impact on character, amenity and tranquility or function of the village. First thing I'd observe is that those are incredibly broad terms, character, amenity, tranquility and function. Um, you know, they're, they're, very, um, they're very broad terms there, so there's a lot of discretion within that. And picking up on that, a point that's very important to me actually is a point that I think it was Councillor Milnes who first raised, is the fact that we don't have a visualisation of the impact of this development um, on the area and particularly on the PVAA um, um, and as it would be seen from, from the public right away. So we don't actually have any um, evidence from the developer uh, to, to suggest actually this wouldn't have a significant um, impact on character amenity um, or indeed one could say function um, of the village. So looking at that policy, looking at the fact that we don't have um, a visualisation uh, or what we have seen suggests that this these buildings could have quite a significant visual impact. For me, I think there is sufficient ground to say this is incompatible um, with policy NH11. As I say, taking on board the fact that it doesn't rule out development um, absolutely but looking at the factors that it says we should consider i'm not satisfied actually um that this development would not have a significant impact on character immunity and tranquility um of that pvaa i don't think it's necessary um for it to um encroach on the pvaa and i don't actually think that the encroachment is necessarily insignificant. I mean, 2% doesn't sound very really much, but 2% is a significant amount. Um, and the local plan does say these areas need to be protected. Uh, they shouldn't be developed unless they really need to be. And if we start allowing nibbling away at the edges of them, um, then I think that could set um, a very dangerous precedent. Uh, the parking concerns me as well. Again, I completely accept that what, what um, Councillor Hawking said, um, that it is compliant with, with um, policy. I assume that we're, we're using, we're, we're assuming that the use class will be A2, um, so one one space per 25 square metres. I mean, I think actually I'm not actually sure about whether the policy is right there. Um, I do accept it, it it's uh, it's compliant with the policy, however. But I mean, bearing in mind, of course, two of those eight spaces are um, disabled parking spaces, which of course we need. We certainly should have disabled parking spaces. Um, but you could be down to a situation where actually you've got six um, parking spaces there. So I, I wonder actually if the um, if our local plan is right on that, but, but that, that's another issue. Um, thank you very much, Chair. Chairman, uh, the next request to speak is from Councillor uh, Deborah Roberts. Uh, Councillor Roberts, please. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I'm probably one of the very few people who are attending this meeting now can actually remember uh, when it was a farmyard. My parents-in-law lived in Abington, Little Abington, for many years. And we used to go regularly by there because my children, very small children, wanted to see the pigs and the chickens. Um, so I actually remember it as a working farmyard and it it isn't or wasn't uh, at that time anything like uh, what is envisaged in the, in the new design. Um, it was very, very low key. Um, it was very much a, a little farmhouse on the corner and, and a yard with a, a few very low scattered buildings and a, a lot of open area. Um, it was never a, a close, it was never a big multitude of, of buildings there. And so it did give you that um, sight through um, to beyond, which is now the PVAA. And I think we need to take into serious consideration the effect, as Councillor Henry Batchelor was saying, on the conservation area. I think we are very clear that conservation areas, it has to be very good reasons for um, actually uh, imposing something on them. It's obviously subjective, but my feelings are that in its present form, it is harmful and it's adversely harmful, and that overweighs the, the gains. Um, I think the PVAA and being able to see it, that certainly was, to my recall, something that uh, was very important um, in the village 
um, people used to, you know, very much appreciate that that view through. So I think any changing that and any encroachment is actually to to be um, argued against. So I, I think, like uh, others have said, um, yes, something will go there. Um, quite clearly, something can go there, and and the parish council and the local councillors, district and county, um, are quite supportive of that. But um, and, and the parish council, of course. Um, but what is presented at the moment is not uh, what should be aimed at. We need to be giving more thought to um, it being balanced as it as it was in the past, and not not overtake the village as it is. I'm really concerned at the thought of um, all those mature trees coming down because obviously they make quite a, an impact um, visually in the area. They soften landscapes um, and you know you take as many down as is being um, considered and argued here, you are changing it in a really um, serious manner. So Yes, something something can come of this, but at the moment we're not ready. Thank you. Right, thank you very much for that. We have passed 11.30 now. I think there's still a little way to go um, on this one. So I'm proposing um, to take a short 10 minute break. Uh, is that in the agreement, everybody? You all happy with that? Is, is that up to quarter to chairman? Sorry? Is that up to quarter two? Well, uh, I make I make it eleven forty six. Liam, if you'd be kind enough to. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, uh, Liam. If we could um, put up the notice and close down for the ten minutes, please. Yeah, sure. I'll put up a slide. Um, yeah, thank you. Are we off the air now?
Yeah, I've sent us live, but I'm just waiting for the for the delay, um, just to confirm to you that we are in fact live. Okay. Yeah, we're all good. we I can confirm we're live. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, welcome back to South Cam's District Council Planning Committee. Uh, we're dealing with uh, the application for Bancroft Farm at Little Abington. Uh, and we're in the, the middle of the debate on that. I can just check with the vice chair that I have um, two speakers down on my list. That's Councillor Khan and yourself. That's correct. Uh, is that correct, please? That's yep. correct, Chairman. Thank you. I will then speak um, after that. Um, and my intention then will be to um, seek clarification from Mr Carter uh, on the grounds uh, of possible refusal for those that wish to vote for refusal. So, Councillor Khan, please. Uh, I'll just turn the camera on. Can you see me now? OK, uh, thank you very much indeed. Various comments on this uh, application have come from the very big, the starting point that all, all that buildings are ugly. Um, it's clear that everybody has been, uh, most people seem to be saying the building will be ugly and this will therefore have an impact upon the uh, upon the environment. Um, I think that that's perhaps not the case in this situation. I think it's an imaginative way of dealing with the development. We, we have the assert presumption that has been clearly stated that development of up to six houses on this site is accepted uh, and will occur and we could I don't think that uh, having modern houses like the one um, is necessarily the answer I think the design is an imaginative solution to the problem I have no problem with the uh, um, the small business units I think that's a good idea I think it's difficult to know in the future whether people will go more for home working or separate units, uh, small units away from the main office but which are uh, close to home. Uh, if it's the second type of development that tends to take place then these will be very useful for the residents of uh, Greater Abington, uh, Little Abington because I imagine a large proportion uh, uh, of the residents will be travelling quite a long distance to work. Um, being a small village in the, uh, in the countryside. So, uh, I generally feel that um, lo looking at the view from the um, amenity area towards the development, it's a bit of a scruffy edge, it's woody, it's green, it's a bit of a scruffy edge and having, uh, it's an area which is surrounded by development on all sides, small rural country, country type development and I think this would fit in rather well and in some ways may even create more features of interest from people uh, getting access to the immunity area. I'm not at all sure that it's going to uh, make it worse. I think it might even make it better. My big problem is the extent of the loss of greenery on the site. Um, I accept that the trees, I, have, I spent quite a lot of time looking at the uh, street view since uh, this time we can't go and do a site visit. Um, and I accept that the trees along the road are not like the trees on the other side of the road. They're, quite scrubby, rather uh, very much invaded by ivy, uh, generally not in very good quality. But there's quite a lot of greenery and scrub on the uh, on the uh, on the site, which is probably a lot of it developed since the farm closed down. Uh, uh, and that is a loss. And I would have thought it'd be more common upon this in the biodiversity plan. However, since the development is likely to be on the site, going to be on the site in any case, we have little control over what actually happens in gardens once development takes place. I think it's difficult to find that as a reason to say that we should refuse it. So um, I actually think it will be probably an asset to the village, an, an inter a, feature, a nice feature of interest. Uh, uh, and I generally, I, I come to the conclusion that I think I would, uh, that it achieves enough for me to, more, to, you know, me to feel that I would like, I will support it. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Bradnam, then please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I find this quite uh, an interesting application because 
in many ways, I think there's much that's good about it. Um, that the um, there's an indication uh, of uh, use of timber and napped flint and wood in the um, and weatherboard in in the proposed development. Um, and there's a recognition that by setting the eastern side of the plot back from the road, that might in some respects reflect what is on the west side of uh, Church Lane. Um, but plots one and six turn their backs on Church Lane, um, which seems a shame. Although I note that further down Church Lane, there is a garage that is right up against Church Lane, has a blank wall against it. And we know that the existing barns um, are hard up against the road. I think the difficulty I have is that plot six, I believe is two story. And um, that's a shame that it's taller than the existing buildings because they fit underneath the wall, whereas plot six doesn't. Um, I'm concerned about the intrusion into the protected village amenity area because that was hard won when the parish um, sought for its designation and that was agreed. And that's why I made the point at the beginning about the fact that and I'm not criticising the case officer, but it was not easy to see that, in fact, that intrusion extended not only across the gardens, which would obviously end up being enclosed, but also some of it is actually on the footprint of the buildings. Um, so I'm concerned about that because what I'm what I observe is that it's that viewpoint from the corner of. Um, sorry, is it? Uh, at the northwestern corner of the site, that viewpoint across the PVAA is wide and it's glimpsed, glimpsed views through uh, not very dense trees and a low hedge, which will be lost in, inevitably. It will be lost to a, a, a boundary around a garden. And so it'll make that viewpoint from, um, is it Bourne Bridge Road, much more limited. Um, the other point is, um, Basically, the whole problem is caused because the parish approved, were minded to suggest, yes, six um, dwellings, but that was on the assumption that perhaps the existing barns might be two of those dwellings. In other words, the space would be much less and they, they could have redesigned it so as not to put the footprint over the PVAA. Um, and I'm minded that this is in a conservation area and that too is a precious designation. So there's a sort of feeling in my mind there's a bit too much crammed in 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 the space. And I would dearly like to think that the par that the developer was required to actually have a bit more consultation with the parish council, because as we've heard, the parish council hasn't objected um, to uh, developments in the past and it has accepted um, developments and worked with developers and um, ended up with uh, developments that they could support. So I'm I'm also wondering whether we could not, for example, um, require that these dwellings are marketed with adjoining office space so that we could make it quite clear that we, from our point of view, we felt that um, the offices should be ideally being used by people in the same in the houses on the development. I don't know whether that's possible. Um, so I'm still uh, quite uncertain about which way I want to um, uh, vote on this, but I think I think it would be hard to refuse for the, for many of the reasons that Councillor Khan um, suggests. There are there are aspects in which this could be imp the 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 area could be improved, and I, and I actually think the design of the buildings themselves is quite attractive, given it was a farm um, uh, site. But I just think there's sort of too much on the site, um, and particularly I think it would be helpful if plot one were not there <laughs> and that the rest were brought in. Anyway, that's what we've got in front of us. And I'm still thinking about it when we get around to the vote. I'll think about it even more. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much for that.
Um, uh, as I said earlier, I am also one of the local members uh, for this area. Um, clearly, this is um, a balance. So does the harm outweigh the benefits or does the benefits outweigh the harm? Uh, I have to say that in my view, there's three key elements here. So we've got the protected PVAA area and policy in H11 states quite clearly that uh, there should be no new building in or adjacent to these areas. This application is in and adjacent, taking out not an insignificant 600 square meters of land. 600 square meters is quite a lot. It is, for example, three times the floor area of the commercial element of this application. Uh, and as just uh, as Councillor Bradman has just been pointing out, and others have as well, um, the that area actually encroaches on the main view of the openness there uh, from Bombridge Road. So uh, I see that as a harm. We've got policy NH14 regarding heritage assets. Any application must sustain and enhance the asset, that policy says. So Mary the Virgin is a listed building and is his heritage asset closest to this. The application site is just across the road and there, it, it can't, given the intrusive build form there, it can't do anything other than harm the setting of that building. This is a conservation area and policy H9 stroke one says applications must conserve and enhance natural and historic assets. I'm afraid I can't see that this application uh, achieves either of these. Just on the question of the benefits perhaps from the commercial element, one, this is very small, 174 square meters. Uh, there's, I'm sorry, there's a good deal of background noise. Could we make sure that everyone is muted, please? Thank you very much. Um, I was saying about the commercial element, which is small. We're, uh, the next application we're going to look at at Forborn um, actually has an interesting uh, survey of available office space within 22 miles of uh, uh, within 10 miles rather of Forborn. Um, that showed that there were 22 unoccupied units, some of which have been on the market for one to three years. So it's not as taken that you, by simply opening up some office space that you're actually going to fill it. So there's no evidence that this is actually going to be a benefit. So what benefit is there? Um, as far as I can see, the only beneficiary will be the applicant. No, there is no obligation uh, on this site for any 106 contributions, um, and there is no community benefit coming out, out of this project. So, this application is clearly contrary, in my mind, to NH11, NH14, and H91. For me, the balance is weighed very much uh, against this application at this stage. They need to go away, review it, and get a less intrusive um, project. So uh, I will be voting for the refusal. Right, thank you for that. Um, uh, Mr Carter, could I just clarify with you, anybody who wishes to vote for refusal uh, with the grounds that I've just outlined be acceptable. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, I've been working on a couple of uh, reasons for refusal, um, which I can display on the screen if that would be helpful or alternatively I can read them out. Well, uh, if they're easily on the screen, that's fine. Yeah, I'll just share that now, Chair. Do 
can just let me know when you can see that. Yeah, see it. Thank you. Would you like me to read them out as well? Could it be enlarged a little, please? Yeah. Thank you. That's great. So just to clarify, Chair, the first reason uh, relates to the encroachment into the PVAA. Yep. Uh, the second reason relates to um, impact on both the conservation area and the list grade two star listed church. Right. Um, I, ha I haven't included any specific commentary around trees, um, principally for the reason given by Councillor Hawkins in that there is quite uh, good evidence um, from the tree officer that uh, that many of the trees are not of high quality that, that should be retained. Um, and I also haven't included anything about um, the office use. Um, the reason for that being that it, in principle, there's, there's no policy uh, requirement for it to be linked to the residential element of the scheme in, in any way, notwithstanding that may be the preference of, of some members. So um, with those two exceptions, uh, you have two reasons for refusal there. OK, thank you very much for that. Um, I just need to check if there's any any further speakers. I don't yes, want please. to all up again. Are you sure that you need? Yes, please. I just want clarification. Um, did the well, I didn't see it in time. If I may, through you, Chair, ask Mr. Carter. Um, did the reason for objection by virtue of the PVAA include the loss of um, visual access from the corner of Bourne? Bridge Road, because that lo loss of visual, visual, the the sight line to the PVAA. So it, it, through you, Chair, if I just read out the the key paragraph, it says the proposed development by virtue of its encroachment into this protected village amenity area would undermine the undeveloped nature and rural character at the centre of the village, failing to preserve the local rural character, amenity and sense of tranquility of the area or provide a place responsive and legible form of development. And then it goes on to cite the policy reference. So there isn't a specific comment uh, about a particular view, but in my opinion, that would be picked up uh, with the words around local character, sense of tranquility uh, and uh, character of the centre of the village, Councillor. Yeah, yeah, good word. Right, right. Yeah. thank you very much for that. OK, let's uh, I, as I, say, I have no more speakers, so let's um, proceed to make a decision on this. So the um, officer recommendation is for approval. Um, I'll have a roll call in a moment. If you uh, want to support approval, you're for. If you want to refuse it, you're against uh, and you can abstain if you wish. All right, I'm going to take the roll call now. So, Councillor Bradman, please. Refuse. Refuse, thank you. Councillor Khan. Uh, four. Oh, thank you. Councillor Daunton. Refuse. Refuse, thank you. Councillor Fayen. Four. Four, thank you. Councillor Dr. Hawkins. Four. Thank you. Councillor Mills. Four. Thank you. Councillor Roberts. Refuse, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Heather Williams. Refuse. Thank you. Councillor Richard Williams. Uh, against, so refuse. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wright. Refuse, Chairman. Thank you. And my vote is for refusal. Two, four, five. So it's seven votes for refusal and four votes for. So that application is refused on the basis of uh, the um, reasons outlined during the debate and uh, Mr Carter. For clarity, can we clarify that we had no abstentions? I know the numbers add up, but. There were no abstentions. Yeah, thank you. OK, thank you very much. We move on to the next uh, item, and that is at Albon 
item six on our agendas is num page number 73 to 96. Right. This is reference. Now, there's still some background noise. We all muted. Right, thank you very much. So it's reference 20 stroke uh, 02833 FUL. This is at 6 Pierce Lane, Fourbon. Chairman, um, yep. might I just simply come in? It's Councillor Dawson oh, sorry, to sorry. remind you that I'm standing down. Um, yeah. and I, yes, and I have a request to speak, so I won't be taking part in the debate. No, but you will. You have dispensations. I understand it to speak as a local member. Yeah. At the public speaking element. OK, that's noted. Uh, so the proposal is for the demolition of, uh, demolition of existing commercial buildings and construction of five dwelling houses, one detached and four terraced, together with open and covered parking and including pedestrian and vehicular access. The applicants are Logan Holmes and Messrs Parker. Uh, the case officer would take us through the key material considerations. Um, this application is brought to committee because uh, it's referred to planning committee by Fulbourne, Par Fulbourne Parish Council and by ward member. The officer recommendation of approval conflicts with the recommendation of the parish council and ward member and is referred to the committee from the planning delegation meeting. The officer recommendation is for approval. The presenting officer is Luke Waddington, senior planning officer. Mr Waddington, would you take us through your presentation, please? Thank you, Chair, and good afternoon, members. I'm just going to share with my presentation. I just confirm that you can see that my, my first slide, yes, please. Yes, you can see that. That's fine. Excellent. And the laser pointer as well, please. <coughs> yep, you can see that. OK, thank you very much. Um, so thank you very much, Chair. Um, just before I get into the presentation, um, I'd like to apologise just for uh, an error in the report that I've picked up. Um, paragraph 71, uh, my officer report refers to the dwelling that adjoins the site to the west here. Uh, number 12, Pierce Lane, as number seven. Um, that's obviously a, a, a typo, typo error, so I do apologise for that. Um, so, as you can see, uh, the application site is number six, Pierce Lane, for born here, outlined in red. Um, Pierce Lane running up here and joining the high street. Uh, the, kite, the site is currently a joinery workshop uh, with a collection of commercial buildings around a hard standing yard area accessed via Pierce Lane. Um, you can see from the aerial photograph here the access, the nature of the buildings and surrounding development. Um, the application site is within Thornmore Conservation Area as outlined in pink to the north and the south. Uh, there's a number of listed buildings as well um, to the east of the site. Um, it's proposed to demolish the existing buildings on site and replace them with five two storey dwellings which are comprised of one detached three bed dwelling and four terrace dwellings made up of two two bed houses and two three bed houses. Um, in addition to the objections from uh, Thorborne Parish Council, five objections have been received from third parties. Um, the objections are generally concerned with the loss of the employment use of the site, the design and the impact on designated heritage assets, the amount of development and highway safety concerns. Um, two third party comments have also been received um, that neither support or object to the development and one third party letter of support has been received. 
I've just moved to some site photographs um, as annotated. This is sort of looking down towards the site from the uh, looking towards the west from Pierce Lane. It shows the existing buildings on site. Uh, number 12 Pierce Lane, the adjoining dwelling, uh, sorry, adjacent dwelling visible there. Slightly further up towards the high street, um, showing the adjacent dwelling and a view down Pierce Lane and the curve of Pierce Lane. And then back up the other way, so uh, looking east towards High Street. And again, a little bit further down Pierce Lane, looking up east towards High Street with the application site here. Sort of marked, the beginning of which is marked by this brown clad building. Um, and courtesy of Google Street View, a clear view into the site, the wide angle from Google Street View just helped get a, a better angle into the site and the nature of the buildings within it. Um, so in terms of the material considerations, officers are satisfied that the principle of development is acceptable. Uh, whilst there would be a lot of employment use at the site, this is considered to be outweighed by public benefits of the proposal in terms of enhancement to the conservation area and settings to the adjacent listed building and the reduction of vehicle movements and improvements to highway safety. Following consultation with the conservation team, the proposal is considered to be acceptable in terms of design. It is not considered to result in significant harm upon the character and appearance of the conservation area. Um, and officers also consider that the proposed development would not result in significant harm to the, the residential amenity of neighbouring properties. Um, we've got some plans as well, um, like I, I won't dwell on these too much as um, they are visible online and uh, in the members uh, drawing packs, but this is the proposed site plan. Uh, the access has been relocated, existing access is approximately here. Uh, it's been relocated further down the site. The four terrace dwellings are shown in their position here with the fifth to the rear. Proposed elevations for the terraces, uh, units one to four. Street scene showing the adjacent existing dwelling and a um, approved site which has not yet been implemented. Uh, the floor plans again for units one to four showing the three bed units at either end of the terrace and the two beds in the middle. The elevations of the detached property to the rear unit five. Again, floor plans. Um, the garage plans and elevations for the carports and which serve plots one to four and the detached garage for plot five. And that's the end of our presentation. Um, officers consider that uh, we're subject to recommended conditions. Uh, there are no objections from any technical consultees, including local hire authority and a conservation team, and the application is recommended for approval. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much for that. Um, all right, members, any points of clarification you want to pursue with the case officer? We've no requests for clarification no yet, Chairman. No, OK. Could I just ask one then? Uh, one of the possible issues on this one is the fact that uh, uh, there hasn't been any advertising uh, to see if commercial element could be sustained here. Um, could you comment on that, please? Yes, thank, thank you, Chair. So. Um, the, um, the relevant policy E14 um, has two parts. Um, the first part, part one, is sort of split into three separate criteria. Um, the first of which um, requires essentially that the, um, the applicants or the site owners undertake a 12 months marketing period uh, in order to demonstrate um, there's no sort of vi viable um, employment use. Um, the two other criteria, and one of them, the second one, criteria B, um, requires the overall benefit to the community of the proposals um, to outweigh any adverse impacts on employment opportunities and the range of employment land. And uh, part, the third part, uh, part C, requires existing use. Um, well, it, it states that if the existing use is generating environmental problems such as noise and pollution or unacceptable levels of traffic, um, then um, the, 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 the sort of cessation of employment use um, could potentially also bring, bring benefits. 
um, and that a, a proposal to remove employment use could be satisfied on those grounds. The, the policy requires only one of these criteria to be satisfied. So either the, um, the evidence that the, the marketing evidence, the benefit to the community or the, um, the loss of sort of harmful um, harmful um, impacts to the to the neighbourhood. So um, the, um, the, the strand that's sort of been um, been sought is is part B. So the, the provides the overall benefits to the community um, as sort of set out in the officer report. The um, that wouldn't require any sort of 12 month marketing period. Um, the second part of the proposal of the of policy um, E12 goes into um, uh, the sort of viability evidence that would be required if, if no um, employment uses are, be, are to be um, provided on site or as part of the scheme. Um, so that element that it doesn't require explicitly a, um, a 12 month marketing period, the applicants have submitted sort of viability information which says why uh, in their, in their um, opinion it doesn't uh, it wouldn't be viable to provide an employment use um, on the site. Or Right, thank you very much. OK, um, Vice Chair, do I have speakers? Uh, yes, the Chairman. Um, Councillor Nick Wright would like to right. ask a question. Councillor Wright, please. Thank you, Chairman. The Planning Officer has answered my question already. Excellent. Uh, chairman, then I have the next request to speak. Right. Councillor Bradley, thank you, chairman. please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I wanted to ask the case officer how long, I appreciate what he says about only one of the two conditions about loss of employment uh, sites, that only one of the two conditions needs to apply. But I just wondered, um, the other is the element of um, the negative impact of any employment use. And I just wondered how long has the site not been used as a woodworking yard and, and that might um, be why there has there's a, and so that's the first thing and it was there any evidence that its previous use as a woodworking yard did cause residential uh, noise or dust issues before all right luke uh, thank you chair and thank you councillor bradnam um the site, as far as I'm aware, is still in use. Um, there's no policy requirement for it to be, um, but under e policy 14, for it to be um, vacant. Um, as as far as sort of no, um, complaints or of noise or anything like that are concerned, um, as far as I'm aware, there haven't been any. I did inquire with our environmental health team um, as to whether any have been received, um, and and the, they responded to say that there hadn't been sort of any, um, at least within sort of recent recent years. Um, so obviously in terms of the policy 14 and um, part 1c of that policy, which is the part that you mentioned, which covers you know, the, the sort of unacceptable noise or pollution that, that could be stopped as a result of the development, um, that probably, probably wouldn't, be, um, wouldn't be applicable in this situation um, as we don't really have any evidence that, that there has been any sort of uh, environmental problems really um, from, the, from the existing use. OK, so just to clarify then, if I may, Chairman, um, the site is still in current use and there are no objections to the, to any noise or anything like that. So that's great. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Uh, Chairman, the next request to speak is from Councillor Hawkins. Right, Councillor Dr Hawkins, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Very quick one. Um, having read the, uh, the commercial assessment, I note the assessment was an either or. Um, you know, uh, commercial or residential, but there is no assessment of a mixed commercial resi use. Is there not a case for that? Uh, Luke, no. That's correct. As far as I'm aware, there isn't. Um, I believe that the um, the arguments are made that the uh, commercial use in this location um, wouldn't be viable um, through Sort of various various reasons that the um, there's a number of sort of properties um, of similar size or smaller I think between three to ten thousand square feet um, within the area um, that that sort of have been vacant they're advertised that are currently vacant or that have have been vacant for some time um, and that, that that sort of um, contributes to sort of a, a, an argument that there wouldn't be um, 
a viable uh, viable use of this site for, for an element of, uh, of commercial um, commercial use. Uh, if I'm wrong, but I thought the the uh, the uses that had been examined were for big spaces, not for small spaces that we know we need. I believe the they've undertaken the yeah the the survey for. Um, uh, industrial uh, units of uh, mm. 3,000 to 10,000 square feet. Um, the current, um, I think the current site is about, uh, in terms of buildings, is about 7.1 thousand. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Chairman, the next request to speak is from Councillor Heather Williams. Yep. Councillor Heather Williams, please. Thank you. Um, through yourself, Chairman, I'm just wondering if, if the officer could give some clarification as to if we've, as an authority, had a change of position in relation to policy E14, as um, there was an, a request to convert to an outbuilding into one bungalow in my patch, um, and there were assessments and viability assessments provided. However, the council was not accepting those on the basis that the policy says that it must be marketed for 12 months and, and we did actually get taken to appeal on that case and, and did defend our decision there. So I'm wondering why in this case we've been saying that documentation and viability reports are acceptable when in the past we've defended that they aren't. Has there been a change of policy that we need to bear in mind? Thank you Chairman. All right, thank you for that. Luke, can you help us with that? Yeah, um, no, the um, the policy 14, um, the first part of it um, only requires marketing. The marketing criteria to be met um, in one of one of three cases. Um, so the, the 12 months marketing isn't a necessity. It, it's it's a route. Um, it's one of the routes through which the policy can provide support to proposals like this, but it isn't it isn't the only one. Um, so part 1A of policy 14 has the, the three sort of separate criteria, um, only one of which um, needs to be met. Um, the, the 12 months marketing is one of those, um, but um, but as sort of set out in the report, the the, um, the overall benefits of the proposal are considered to outweigh the loss of the loss of employment, um, which which is the element that satisfies part 1B. Um, so that that's the part that's been part of that policy that's been met, um, as opposed to the part which requires 12 months marketing. Right, thank you. Um, I think Councillor Richard Williams next, please. Thank you, <coughs> thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just just like to um, ask for a bit more clarification on on exactly that point, actually. Um, so on E fourteen B, which it looks like the one where we're, we're relying on, um, what is the benefit? Because reading the report, that it refers to the fact that the Existing units on the side don't, don't look very nice or, or, or are not of high quality, um, but I'm slightly struggling to see any other benefit. Um, so could the officer just clarify what exactly the benefit to the community is or what, what the grounds for that are? Is it just removal of those buildings? So yeah, the, the removal of the buildings and the um, their replacement with a um, with the with the proposals would, um, in the officer's view and the view of the conservation officer, provide an enhancement to the um, conservation area and to the setting of um, adjacent listed building, um, which would provide a, a public benefit in terms of the, the 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 sort of the I guess the special interest of the conservation area. Um, there's also um, comments from the local highways authority um, that indicate that the um, the proposal would. A, uh, would provide a, a benefit to to highway safety in terms of, sort of reduced vehicle trips and reduced numbers numbers of vehicles and uh, commercial vehicles visiting the site. Um, so the the two sort of two sort of strands there um, would kind of would amount to a, a public benefit. All right, thank you, uh, Vice Chair. Do we have any further speakers? Yes, Chairman, with your um, permission, I'd just like to ask for further clarification. Just one more element, please. All right. Thank you. Councillor Bradman, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just wanted to ask the case officer at item th paragraph 36 on page 81 of our agenda. Um, we were talking about this, you know, the balance between the three options for 
um, reasons why commercial use um, might be outweighed by benefit of dwellings, the loss of that commercial use. And, and it says the, the application states that the existing business is small and employs four people, two of whom are owners of the present, present business who are seeking to close the business. So my concern is that this is kind of the perfect sort of business to be going on in on in a village which is quite large um, or a modest sized village, but it actually is offering employment to, to four people and it's simply a choice that this family, probably family company, have um, would like to, to uh, stop the business, but they haven't marketed and I, I just feel that's a shame that they haven't done the marketing exercise. Um, also, I'm concerned that I there may be evidence and I apologise if I've not seen it, but I just do wonder about the possible movements of vehicles from the rear of the properties onto Pieces Lane. That might be four or five vehicles um, coming in and out in the morning and in the evening. I don't know whether that might be more than what the current woodworking business uh, might represent in terms of traffic movements. And I wondered if the case officer could comment on that, please. Right, thank you. Um, yeah, I know you you have already done that a number of times as far as the um, commercial prospects are concerned, but certainly the uh, movement of vehicles is an issue. Could you enlighten us, please, Lou? Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. So um, a, um, a transport statement was submitted by the applicant, some um, which is available on, online, which sort of sets out the vehicle movements. Obviously, we've consulted the local highways authority on on that um, piece of information, um, and and they've commented. You know, their, their comments are that um, <clears throat> excuse me, that they're they're sort of happy with that information. They they haven't objected on the basis, you know, of vehicle movements being um, being worse, or that the the proposed vehicle movements might um, result in a sort of additional or worse impact on highway safety. Um, and, and in fact, the comments from the high, high local highway authority indicate that the contrary might might be the case and that um, they actually may reduce uh, the number of vehicle movements and, and potentially improve um, highway safety onto onto in, in the vicinity. All right, thank you very much for that. Um, I'd like to now move to public speakers. So we have three public speakers. Is uh, David Cotty with us, please? Yeah, <coughs> yes, hello. Hello, yeah, we can hear you. Can't can see you, you yet. Yeah. Can you see me? Yep. Okay. So welcome uh, to the committee. Um, how, do you know the process? Yes, yes. I, I have done it before uh, at okay. uh, South Cams. It's okay. okay, so shall I start? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Chairman, could we just understand, is David Cotty a, a, a neighbour objecting? Um, please. Do you want me to answer that? Yeah, please. Yes, I'm. Um, I'm. I'm not a a direct neighbour. I live in the village, and I'm the secretary of Fullbourn Forum. Yeah. Right, lovely. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Right, I'll start. Um, the proposals represent a significant overdevelopment on an important site in the conservation area, compounded by a lack of adherence to the village design guide. The redevelopment presents an opportunity to enhance the street with a sympathetic, contemporary, high quality design planned to allow the continuation of frontages of hedgerows and trees, the fundamental character of Pierce Lane, as encouraged by the design guide. However, we're presented here with a, with a large block structure of no architectural merit, with a strange mix of historical architectural references including two-tone brickwork with faux coins, a variety of Victorian pastiche details, a few circular elements thrown in for good measure, a mix of sash and casement windows, and what appears to be three false chimneys. The planning officer in his report confirms that Pierce Lane and the conservation area has a diversity of buildings ranging from medieval times to recent decades, all clearly attributable to their period of construction. He also confirms that there are, I quote, visually successful contemporary upgrades and small infill. However, 
Having confirmed this diversity, the planning and conservation officers then conclude that, I quote, the emulation of Victorian design is appropriate as, I quote, it acknowledges the late Victorian architecture evident in several locations in Fulbourne, end quote. What are we to make of that? This strange logic completely undermines the work, not to mention the cost of preparing the village design guide, which aspires to achieve quality contemporary design generally using traditional materials and simple forms, responding to its physical context or place, and in, in a way that firmly sets the architecture in the 21st century. A smaller scheme of perhaps two detached or maybe one semi-detached property would enable the buildings to be set back from the street significantly more than the two meters in the proposed scheme, so that trees and hedges could be incorporated. With the omission of the rear detached property, space would be available for visitor parking, thus avoiding the inevitable spread of parking into the already overutilized adjacent high street while allowing adequate rear gardens to be maintained. In addition, it should be noted that the present scheme has no provision for refuse bins to be collected at the road edge. The planning officer proposes that landscape features can be dealt with by condition. Within the conservation area and with a village design guide in place, these important details should surely be agreed at the full planning stage. And to conclude, the South Cam's drainage engineer confirms that workable surface water and foul water drainage provision has not been demonstrated. Why? Again, this detail should not be left to yet another condition. It is, for example, clear that building regulation compliant surface water soakaways are not feasible in the small front gardens. We contend that the application should be refused to allow time for a full redesign and the preparation of a fully detailed application that deals with all the above objections. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, members, do you have any points of clarification for Mr. Cotty? Last chair. There we... are no requests so far, Chair. Um, okay then. Right, thank you very much then, Mr. Cotty. Thank okay, you for your contribution. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. We'll move on then to, I think it's the applicant, uh, Mr. Gilby. Is Mr. Gilby with us, please? Uh, good morning, Chair. Can you hear me? I can indeed and see you. Yep, welcome, you. Welcome to the committee. Thank you. Um, you. I'm sure you know the process. Yeah. You've got three minutes uh, and then there may well be questions so when you are ready. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Chair, Councillors. Uh, my name is Philip Gilby. I'm the Managing Director of Logan Homes. Firstly, may I thank your planning officers and heritage teams for their assistance from pre-application discussions through to the submission currently set before you and for a most comprehensive report, report confirming their support for this application. The proposal is for a development of much needed two and three bedroom dwellings set within a highly sustainable location close to the centre of the village. We at Logan Homes specialise in the design and developments in sensitive village locations and are acutely aware of the need, especially in conservation areas, for the scheme to improve and enhance its location. We strongly feel the proposed scheme relates clearly and concisely to the area and has a style, form and character which both enhances and improves the locality. We're delighted to have both planning officer and conservationist officer support in this manner. During this process, we have carefully considered the design and layout of the proposed scheme to ensure it complies with the objectives of the village, Fullborn Village Design Guide. The proposal will remove unattractive commercial buildings from the conservation area, replacing them with buildings with softly, softly detailed period styling. It will also push the built line away from the pavement edge, replacing it with landscape green front gardens. Both of these opportunities presented by the proposed scheme would be a significant benefit to the appearance of the conservation area. As the planning officer report concludes, the change of use does not represent a significant loss of employment to opportunities and allows the removal of existing unrestricted B2 commercial buildings from a predominantly residential area. Furthermore, the removal of the existing use will remove the need for commercial vehicle activity in this location. And as concluded by the County Highways Officer, has the potential to improve the road safety for both pedestrians and road users alike. Uh, we would respectfully reiterate to members that in addition to the recommendation of approval by your planning officer, there are no objections whatsoever from your heritage, officers, highway or environment team, the environment agency, public health, 
landscape ecology officer or archaeological service. We're convinced that the proposal before you will not only enhance the location and conservation area, but will provide an aesthetically attractive development of much needed smaller houses within this highly sustainable location. We therefore respectfully request that members approve this application as per the recommendation before you. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Mr Gilby. Uh, members, do you have any points of clarification for Mr Gilby? Vice Chair, do we have any? There are no requests, Chairman. OK, so thank you, Mr Gilby. Um, we'll move on then. The Parish Council uh, is not being represented. Uh, can I just hang on a minute? We're not quite with you yet, uh, Councillor Dawson. Uh, Mr Carter, could I just check with you? The um, the agenda says that this this was uh, referred to the planning committee by Fulbourn Parish Council. I don't think that's the case, is it? Um, no, I think I. Yes, yeah, sorry, Chair. Um, I think I recall this was a referral from Councillor Daunton, which was considered through the delegation meeting process and then referred to the committee. So that that's the uh, the route by which it's made its way to us today. OK, so we need to adjust the. Yes, Chair. Agenda. we can uh, we yeah. can we can note that in the in the minutes. And and it doesn't refer to the fact that the, the delegation meeting actually referred it to committee. Indeed, indeed. So we need to deal with both those. OK, thank you very much. The only reason I wanted to clarify that was, of course, that if a parish council does ask for it to go to committee, it is expected that they come to the committee and give us the reasons why. So uh, local member, this is Councillor Daunton. Um, I'm sure you know the process, so uh, I'll leave it with you. I, it, can I just check? I, I believe you've got a photo. You got um, Well, I said yes, thank you for checking, Chairman. I sent photos to the case officer. Um, I don't know if he has them, but if he hasn't got the photos I sent, I would like to have a photo of the location, please. OK, you would just speak over that, then, yeah? We won't start the timer until we see. Do you want me um, to put the picture up, then? Yes, please. Right. Uh, Luke, can we do that, please? Um, thank you. And um, could I have the photograph, please, with the bus passing? Thank you. OK. Um, okay. Might I begin now, Chairman? Yeah, when you're ready. Yes, thank you. Um, commercial on... Act Commercial activity on this site goes back decades. It is in the centre of Fulbourn Village, alongside a mixture of homes, retail, office and light industry. In short, it is a model example of a sustainable community, a situation lost in many of our other villages. House prices in Fulbourn are high, and as a site for housing development, this is a very valuable plot. But if being green to our core is to mean anything, we must try to protect what is left of our sustainable villages. Policy E14 of the local plan indicates that the loss of employment sites should be resisted unless market demand dictates otherwise. There is a dearth of small specialist and affordable workshop space in the district, as we heard in the previous application, including in Fulbourne. And the applicant's claim of small commercial properties being available within a 10 mile radius does not satisfy the need to retain, where possible, truly local employment sites. The commercial viability appraisal cannot be tested as the site has not been marketed for the minimum of one year period. At the point of the proposed development, Pierce Lane is very narrow, which is obvious on this photograph. It's a narrow and busy two way road with parking restrictions to the east of the entrance. It has a half hourly daily bus service, plus several other less frequent public and school bus services. It is also a well used cycle route to Cherry Hinton and the city. To the west, there is an existing housing terrace. There is a parking problem as residents prefer to park outside their homes, despite the narrowness of the road. This parking together with a curve on the road, as you can see beyond the bus, causes site issues, which will be made worse by cars pulling out of the development without the ability to see other road users. 
County Highways has stated that the visibility displays as presented would, under normal circumstances, be considered unacceptable on safety grounds. They then contend that the development would significantly reduce vehicle movements and can therefore be allowed. But the work employs just four people and vehicle movements during the working day must be low to a non-retail site, not forgetting that the business is closed from four o'clock on weekdays and all day at the weekend. The proposed development has space for 10 vehicles plus 16 or more cycles and bed spaces for up to 24 people, resulting in the potential to increase, not decrease, vehicle and cycle movements. Should, should redevelopment for housing be allowed, a smaller scheme would greatly benefit highway safety. Finally, it is noted that no sustainability statement has been provided. In a conservation area, this and the requirement for renewal renewable energy should not be left as a planning condition. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Any members, any points of clarification required? Vice Chair, anybody? Um, yes, me please, Chairman. Councillor Bradman, please. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, could I ask that we can see the other photographs and have an explanation of them, please? Would that be OK? Yes, certainly. Luke, can we do that? Please? Could perhaps Councillor Daunton explain? Um, yes, so uh, the purpose of this photograph um, is to show the um, how the uh, ad adjacent houses are set back from the road and the line of trees, trees on both sides of the road, um, as Mr Cotty was uh, speaking about. Um, and this, there's a car here and uh, it, in the um, in the evening, the street here is normally lined with cars. It's very difficult to overtake. It's very difficult to see traffic coming in the other direction, and it's very difficult to see cyclists. Uh, it, and, and this, as you can see, the um, the turn of the road um, where the listed building is on the right of your screen, um, that's a very narrow, sharp turn into the high street. So this, uh, this whole area is bordering on the high street um, which is a very busy centre section of the village. And on the bottom photograph, mm. um, you can see the, the cars lined up so that the road turns into, Pierce Lane turns into this road where there are cars uh, parked all the time, so that uh, all of those road spaces are narrow and very busy. Thank you, Chairman. All right, thank you very much. Is there any other thinkers? Uh, there are no other requests for clarification, Chairman. OK, right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Councillor Daunton. Um, if we could take down the, that, uh, that's fine. Um, if you like to turn off your camera, please, Councillor Daunton. Thank you. Um, so uh, debate is then open. Who would like to start? Do we have any speakers? Please? Yeah. Vice Chair. Yes, Chairman, we have request to speak from Councillor Nick Wright. Right. Councillor Wright, please. Thank you, Chairman. And first of all, well done to you for referring this to the Planning Committee. I think you're spot on. Uh, and also well done to the local member, uh, Councillor Daunton. I think she's right. Um, absolutely at the core of our policies is village sustainability. You know, we are agreeing to the core council and as members, I think we're all proud of that. And employment in our villages is what keeps them sustainable. Now, this is, uh, I know it's a small employer, um, you know, to market this site, you know, it it is an employment site first and foremost, but the buildings on it need refurbishment. Uh, and if it is marketed, you know, it can be, you know, can come forward with lots of uh, new plans to uh, demolish the present buildings and put something else on site. So I think there is a clear principle here that this application is not right. Um, it's against our policies. We need to keep our villages sustainable. Uh, what's proposed on the site does not include any employment use. 
it's a pastiche, the design is wrong, um, you name it, it doesn't look right. It might enhance the employment area, but I don't think the use of a public benefit to this site is a valid argument because of the lack of sustainability that it gives to the village. So I, I'm really against this application, Chairman, and I look forward to listening to the others. Thank you, thank you very much. Chairman, the yep. next person who wishes to speak is Councillor Heather Williams. All right, Councillor Heather, Heather Williams, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so I'm going to start with policy E14 um, that I'm going to refer to. So we're being asked to look at section B about overall benefits. I, I don't feel that there is sufficient benefits um, that mean that we should forego the, the 12 month criteria. I think it should be judged under the first category. I think as a as a council, we've been strong on that policy in the past. I think it's vital, especially in the current climate, that we actually make sure that we keep that policy in force to the maximum. Um, I don't, my, my judgment is that it doesn't comply with the design guide as, as local residents have um, pointed out. And uh, as Councillor Wright says on the sustainability grounds and, and employment. Um, and it's interesting this one following the debate that we had previously. But um, so for myself on the planning balance, this is not right. For the for the village, in my view, or the or the wider area, so therefore the overall benefits do not outweigh it all on E14, as there are very few, in my view. Thank you, Chairman. All right, thank you very much, Vice Chair. Do we have more speakers? Yes, we have um, a request from Councillor Richard Williams. Great, thank you very much, Councillor Richard Williams, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Again, I'll try and be quick because uh, a lot of the points I've, I was going to make have already been made. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I agree that um, sustainability in villages is, is a key um, concern for us. It's absolutely should be a, con a key concern for us. And losing these sorts of employment sites um, can have a, an, a serious negative impact um, on that. Um, I agree. Um, policy E14B, I, I don't see any benefit, um, particularly to the community um, that would outweigh the loss of the, um, the employment site. Again, I can see an obvious benefit to the, div, uh, to the to the site owner, as I think was commented on in the last application. I, I can't see any uh, benefit to the community. On the vehicle movements, um, I can't remember who made the point, um, maybe in Councillor Daunton, but, um, but I would agree if this site, in a sense, you can't have it both ways on this site. If the site only employs four people, then presumably there aren't that many vehicle movements, at least related to employment, you replace it with, um, what was it, five houses. You can have, you know, um, 10 adults there, each with a car each, and you could actually end up with slightly more vehicle movements. Um, so so I'm not sure that's a, a clear benefit um, to me um, at all. So um, yeah, um, for me, the balance is against this on the basis of E14. Right, thank you very much. Vice Chair. Uh, the next speaker requesting to speak is Dr. Uh, Councillor Deborah Roberts. Right. Councillor Roberts, please. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Chairman. I'm finding this one a little difficult to get my head around whether I'm for it or against it, to be quite honest. Um, in, in normal circumstances, um, I always thought it was a question that a commercial site had to be um, put up for um, continuation. Um, so I'm a little surprised that it seems to be quite flexible and as long as something else is um, supportable in that uh, region. And so I'd, I'd like a little bit more clarification on that from, from officers because um, I'm a little bit concerned about the precedent it sets if, um, if we can't hold um, employment sites and I think my decision on this will be based around that. Can we actually hold on to um, sustainability um, issues by saying that an employment site um, must be um, must be uh, continued um, and, and a chance must be made to do that? Uh, because quite honestly, there are other elements here which I'm not as concerned about as other members. When you look on the photographs that were shown, there are clearly um, other 
uh, buildings, I think it was the historical building, um, that are actually right on the road edge. So, you know, the argument that some of these houses are set back, well, they appear to be only a little bit set back. So I don't actually have such a problem with the design of it or the type of um, design of the houses there. I can understand that there is an element of concern as well about the uh, probable uh, more traffic movement, but, you know, a business could be having traffic movement all day where houses are generally much more you know, morning and evening. So I haven't at all made up my mind on this yet, but I would like a little bit of clarification on the uh, what I was always understood was a requirement that they had to be put up um, at least for 12 or 18 months as a business. Yeah, thank you. Very much. Yes, that's, thank a, you, that's a, a key key element. Actually, we go to Mr. Carter next and, and pursue that point, I think. Uh, Mr. Thank Carter, can you help us there? So it's E14 is clearly a yeah. contentious element. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, policy E14 uh, seeks to offer flexibility, uh, which is why it gives the three the three options in the first part uh, and requires that um, uh, one of those criteria is met in order to, to, to be satisfactory. And uh, so it really is a, a matter of judgment for, for members in, in this scenario as to whether or not they think those uh, criteria have individually being satisfied if one of those does apply or not. Uh, officers obviously are pointing to, to B, which is that the overall benefit to the community of the uh, proposal outweighs any adverse effect on employment opportunities and the range of, range of available employment, land and premises. So those benefits may be the delivery of new homes or the improvement to the appearance of the area as highlighted by the case officer. But it's perfectly reasonable for uh, an alternative view to be taken. Um, that's a matter of judgment for, for members to, to make. Um, with regard to the requirement for viability evidence, the policy is quite clear that that's, uh, that only applies uh, in part A of part one of the policy. And in part two, there's an option to provide either uh, clear viability or other evidence um, as to why it's not possible to deliver an element of employment use as part of a mixed use scheme. So the policy is flexible, but um, it, it, it's also perfectly acceptable for um, the decision maker to exercise their judgment depending on the circumstances of a particular case. So it wouldn't be unreasonable if members felt that uh, Part B wasn't satisfied uh, to make a decision on that basis here. But Chairman, can I just uh, ask, um, ask Mr Carter, uh, and given what he's just said to us, um, one presume also that the, the applicant could argue um, those policies and those parts of the policies at any appeal? Yes, through you, Chair. Yes, that, that's correct. Um, it is a, a matter of judgment, as I say, um, as to how you apply the policy to the particular circumstances of the application. OK, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr Carter. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair, we have further speakers. Yes, Councillor Dr Toomey Hawkins. Right. Councillor Dr Hawkins, please. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I will be looking at E14, I mean, in, in conjunction with um, 1B and number two. I mean, I haven't seen any benefit as such that has been um, uh, explained. <laughs> yes, there will be, you know, five new homes, but if we look at E14-2, mm -hmm. it does say that any proposal that you know, proposes the loss of all em all employment uses will need to be accompanied by clear viability or other evidence as to why it's not possible to deliver an element of employment on that site. If you recall, I did ask uh, uh, very early on as to why there was not a mixed residential commercial use proposed for this site precisely because of that. And we know that we do need small units for the one man, two man, or, you know, to be politically correct, one person, two person type businesses. And COVID has shown us that we need to make sure that we do not lose employment sites in our villages unnecessarily. And I don't think we are at the stage here yet where the loss of this site has been clearly demonstrated. Um, and also, as far as the design goes, I'm sorry, but it just does not look right. 
and attempt it's either one or the other. You can't mix Georgian and Victorian and whatever else. And I don't think the attempt, I mean, an attempt has been made in the applicant's um, village design guide statement to try and show that they have considered it. But I'm sorry, it, it, it just, it's like, oh, after the fact, this bit matches that bit and this bit matches that bit. No, that's not the purpose of a village design guide. They need to go back to the drawing board. And frankly, I don't see that I can support this application for the very reason that <laughs> we're going to be designing employment side and the benefit has not been shown without a shadow of a doubt. So I'm sorry, but this one for me is a no, no. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Chairman, Chairman. Yep. We have a request to speak, I believe, from Chris Carter. All right, Mr. Carter, you want to come back in or is that the previous one? Yeah, that was the previous one, Chair. Thank you. Sorry, right, I apologise. In which case, the next request to speak is from Councillor Martin Khan. Right, Councillor Khan, if you would like to speak, please. Yeah, uh, it's a difficult application. Uh, I, like Councillor Roberts, don't have any problem with the design. Um, bit pastiche, but I think it does, it is probably better in that location near to the older buildings on the street, that it is something which um, has a, a, an older feel about it uh, and having a, and is more tighter, uh, which a terrace of houses is. I, I don't think at all that a, a detached house on the front is actually what you need there to, to, to build that chain. So I, I'm not worried about the design. The moving of the access, I think, uh, will improve visibility because it's moving further away from the bend. Um, the question is whether is the whole of this question about E14 and employment. Um, now, this is a joinery workshop. The existing use, uh, the owner has said he wants to close. We have no say over that. That that will happen. It will stop being a joinery workshop. So the question is, can he market it as it is? Now, we recently, not that long ago, had an application for another abandoned joinery workshop in Whittlesford, uh, which um, had been marketed and they found nothing, nobody wanted to take it. So the building as it is, is, un, is unlikely to be uh, wanted. Um, so you're looking at some alternative employment use. My, my concern about an alternative employment use is that uh, although four uh, an employment of four, which uh, being an enjoyable workshop, probably also had quite large uh, vehicles going into it, uh, um, uh, but it, it probably not, not an enormous amount. If you have a, a, a new use which has lots of small, uh, small, small sites, you can have quite a large uh, number of people arriving there, and that might be much more significant. So I do see the traffic issue as quite relevant in terms of employment um, for the like type of employment that you could envisage on that site. You certainly couldn't envisage um, commercial traffic going into it. Uh, uh, and so I do see a, a, a road. Actually, I think there is a road safety improvement, um, a genuine road safety improvement by converting to a, a small number of houses um, and uh, particularly not houses with five or six car, large houses, with five or six cars for small houses which is uh, hi there Councillor Khan uh, apologies to interrupt but the live stream has uh I believe it stopped as the my connection to the remote desktop has just dropped so if, if you wouldn't mind just holding on to that thought for just a second while I while I just reconnect to the to the server a, a genuine apologies sorry thank you all right thank you Lynn Mr. Khan, okay. I'll come back to you, but I need to explain what's happened to the public. When okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I've just I've just confirmed. So uh, basically the the connection between my computer and the remote desktop dropped, mm -hmm. but the connection between the remote desktop yourselves and the public did not drop. So I can confirm that there was in fact no disruption uh, of the service apart from my computer not connecting so yeah sorry please do continue okay, so nothing no, no interruption yeah. yeah there was i can confirm definitely that there was no interruption thanks very much okay so for mem benefit of the members of the public uh, we 
had a, a false alarm there where we we thought there may be a, a technical issue. But uh, fortunately, you haven't missed any of uh, Councillor Khan's wisdoms. So, <laughs> Councillor, if you like <laughs> So generally, well, I'm very much in favour of maintaining employment in the village um, and uh, village locations and make uh, improve the sustainability. I'm really not sure that this is the best location because of, I feel that the type of employment that you might be able to put there, and we, if we if we insisted upon it, is actually probably going to cause an increase in traffic uh, uh, and cause a, 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 um, a nuisance. And what would the what I would consider improved visuals because of the rather ugly buildings at present. Um, the better location of the access and what I feel would be a, 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 a reduced problem to traffic on any likely alternative employment. I, I think I, I'm generally thinking in favour of supporting this application. OK, thank you very much. Uh, now it has gone one o'clock. We were going to take lunch, but I think uh, there's only two more um, speakers, uh, vice chair, as far as I could see. That's right, Chairman. There's Councillor Peter Fain. Yep, and yourself. Is it? And myself. OK, so I'd like to bring this to a conclusion, then we'll uh, take lunch. Uh, so Councillor Fain, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't need to say very much, in fact, because I agree with the comments that have just been made by Councillor Khan. Um, so it comes down to the application of policy E14. And we've heard that it hasn't been test marketed, but that is only one of the three criteria. The question, it seems to me, is clearly whether criteria B is satisfied, that is, that of overall benefit to the community. And officers deal with that quite clearly at paragraph 38. Um, and they say that it's considered that benefits to the community would outweigh any adverse impact through loss of employment. And they, in doing that, they take full account of the village design guide. So on that basis, I will be voting to approve. All right, thank you very much, Councillor Fain. And finally then, Councillor Bradman. Thank you, Chairman. Um, my observation is in the local plan at paragraph 8.54, which gives clarification to the policy E14. And it points out that employment sites at villages are a scarce resource which should be retained and making best use of existing employment sites reduces the pressure for development of new sites, including new sites in the countryside. And it also provides a greater range of employment opportunities and reduces the need to travel. Um, and I'm, I'm concerned that there's a balance, isn't there, between the current use of the employment site, which is, as people have pointed out, relatively modest with just four employees and indeed the current employees wishing to stop. So they may be winding down the level of business that they've been engaging in um, versus um, the likely increase in, um, well, the, the, the likely increase in number of traffic movements if there were um, indeed, 10 cars on site, four um, parking spaces, one in front of the other, so eight parking spaces behind the four terrace properties and two further parking spaces behind the larger property at number five. Um, and so there's a balance here, isn't there? Because if this was marketed commercially as a site, and a number of applicants applied or one per, one developer applied um, and, and sought to break it up into smaller units, then it's possible there could be more car movements than that. I think my concern, though, is that people, if it's, if it's allowed to be developed as a housing development, it is really quite likely that people will want to park in front of the houses. This is what people do. And, and so I'm, I'm still somewhat concerned by um, this proposal because I don't think it's clear which future use is likely to cause more traffic movements, unfortunately. Um, so I'm, a, I'm still in a quandary as usual. Thank you, Chairman. OK, thank you very much for that. Um, OK, we'll bring this to a conclusion then. Could I just uh, consult you, uh, Mr Carter, 
Uh, we've already um, looked at E14. Um, uh, and uh, clearly there are um, members who would like to see this um, pursued in terms of advertising. There's also questions about sustainable communities and, and maintaining employment. Um, yes, Chair, it, with your indulgence, I have got a couple of reasons uh, drafted again, which I could share. Fine. Yeah. Um, I have um, one reason related to the loss of employment and the other is is uh, a character of the village and conservation impact. Um, but it would be helpful to know if members felt that was a reason for refusal or just the employment uh, employment reason. So um, I'll scroll down in just a moment so you can see all of the second reason. Right. And if I just scroll down. There he is. Have you got all, all that on the screen there? So it'd be helpful if we could just have some confirmation that that second reason is also one that members, uh, some members would cite or or if it's just the first. OK. I agree with both reasons. Can, I'm um, sorry, Chair, can we just scroll it down again so we can see the first reason, yep. please? Yeah, please, if you would. Thank you, Chairman. Have you all had the chance to? Yeah, just that? Chairman, it just it just concerns me because it, it's seeming to indicate what isn't actually correct. It's seeming to indicate that um it we it, that there is only one reason that um it, that they have to um comply with, and clearly uh, there are three reasons, and the officers have st stated that. It is in com it is it compliant with um, one of those? Well, it, 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 indeed. So you know you wouldn't support it then, presumably. So this this is just so that we are very clear that if you if people wish to vote for refusal, there is a clear um, no, reason but for doing this. Chairman. So. Yes, Chairman. Um, I think it's not unreasonable, if I may, through you. It's not unreasonable that perhaps that first reason could reflect the fact that E14 gives three reasons why why employment use might um, the justifications that might be given to cease employment use, whereas this only refers to one. And I, I do think that perhaps the reason this, this is the one that people were concerned about. It's but clearly we speak. Right, let, let's, let's take advice then. Chair, through you, um, I think the reason does do that. So that there are three criteria in the first part of the policy. Uh, one with regard to evidence of market demand, the second around community benefits outweighing uh, the loss, and the third with regard to environmental problems. And, and the reason says uh, the application does not provide sufficient evidence to adequately demonstrate, demonstrate that the site is inappropriate for employment use having regard to market demand. That's the first one. That the, the development would provide benefits to the community. That's the second one. And the third one with regard to environmental problems, uh, you can see there it says all that environmental problems in terms of pollution or traffic are being caused, etc. So I think that all three elements of uh, policy E14 part one are covered there. Thank you. Uh, right. That, hope that that's satisfies helpful. my concerns. I couldn't read quickly enough. Thank you. OK. Uh, and I think uh, Councillor Dr Hawkins would like to comment. Uh, and um, we've We've Hang on a minute, thank, yes. thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think Perhaps my point was on E14-2, and I think the last paragraph or the last sentence in paragraph one um, refers to that. Is that right, Mr. Carter? Yes, that is correct. The last line says the application also does not justify the lack of an employment provision that's, as part of the proposal. Yeah. yeah, that was it. Thank you. Mr. Reid, did you want to come in? Mr. Reid, let uh, Chair, um, uh, Tony Collins has asked to comment on the second reason. Uh, Mr. Collins is who? 
Can somebody explain who Mr Collins is? Chair, uh, Mr Collins is conservation officer. All right. Good. OK, Mr Collins, welcome. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to point out that um, I was asked for conservation advice on this application. And my advice was that it did not cause harm to the conservation area. And um, if I were asked, I would um, repeat that advice and um, confirm the reasons for it. So if this application was to be refused and that was to be given as one of the reasons, I would not be able to defend the council's decision because I would be contradicting my own professional advice. I just wanted to make that quite clear. Fine. I don't think that's one of the issues that we're actually raising, is it? It is in the second reason that Mr Carter has um, put forward. OK, thank you very yes, much. Good point. Yes, Chair, through, through you, if I may. Um, Mr Collins is obviously right about his advice. Um, it's for members to decide whether or not they agree with that or take a contrary view. Um, I did hear some concern in the debate around the impact of the proposal um, in terms of its design and appearance and the impact that would have on the conservation area in Fulborn, uh, not being reflective of, of that. Uh, but if 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 that's not yeah. the case, obviously members will vote against. Indeed. OK, I think we're at a point that we can make a decision. Uh, so members, I'm going to make a roll call. Um, just to be fair, since uh, for Councillor Bradman is always uh, having to be first, I'm going to reverse the list this time. If that's Thank okay. You, so I'm going to call. Uh, there's no other reason than you know just for fairness, obviously. So could I? Um, start the voting then. So what you're voting for is the um, recommended, the officer recommendation is approval. So if you want approval, you're for it. If you want refusal, you're against. And if you wish to abstain, you abstain. So Councillor Wright, can I have your vote please? Uh, thank you, Chairman. And you'll see from the letter in my alphabet, I've never been first in my life for anything. <laughs> so uh, thank you and I'm voting against it. Against, thank you. Uh, Councillor Richard Williams, please. Against. Against, thank you. Councillor Heather Williams. Against. Against. Uh, Councillor Roberts, please. For Chairman. For. Uh, Councillor Milnes? For. Uh, Councillor Hawkins? Against. Against. Thank you. Um, Councillor Fain? For. Uh, Councillor Dalton has not taken part. Uh, Councillor Khan? For. For. Thank you. Councillor Bradnam. Um, thank you. I'm going to vote for. Four. Okay, thank you very much. And my vote is four. So the vote is one, two, three. It's six, four and five against approved by one vote okay thank you very much for everyone who's contributed to that um it's now 16 minutes past one and i suggest uh, we take a lunch break now and come back at quarter to two so liam if you'd like to close down
Yeah, I confirm we're now live. Thanks. All right, thank you very much. Uh, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to South Cam's District Council Planning Committee. Um, we're already making good progress. Uh, I just want to check that all the members of the committee are back and in operational condition. So if I could just run through a quick roll call. Is Councillor Bradnam with us, please? Present, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Khan. Councillor Khan, are you with us? Not yet. I'll return to Councillor Khan. Councillor Daunton. Yes, present, Chairman. Thank you very much. Councillor Fain. Is Councillor Fain with us? At the moment, it seems. Come on, Councillor Dr. Hawkins. Present, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Milnes. Present, but I can't attest to my condition. Right, thank you. <laughs> Councillor Roberts. Yes, Chairman, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Heather Williams. Present, Chairman. All right, Councillor Richard Williams. Present, Chair. All right, Councillor Wright. Raise the shot, Chairman. Yeah, OK. Councillor Thane, I see you are now with us. Present, Chair. Yeah, so I'm, is Councillor Khan with us? Is Councillor Khan on the line? Chairman, <laughs> shall I ring him? Chairman, yeah. I'll, I'll just, can I, shall I just um, remind Councillor Khan? It would be a shame if he couldn't uh, vote on this matter. OK, but we can't take too long over it. It's... If you'll just give me a few moments, Chairman. OK. And I'll keep calling him. Councillor Khan, are you with us? I'm the... This connection appears to be open. Members of the public, I'm sorry for the delay here. Uh, I think there may well be a short um, technical issue. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I've been in touch with Councillor Khan. He's having a slight IT problem. He needs to go out and come back in again and asks if you would be so kind as to just pause while he comes back in. OK, we'll pause for a couple of minutes. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. So we're trying to deal with uh, the technical issue with one of the members of the committee. We should commence again in a few moments. <clears throat> Hi there, Chair. Uh, I've had a message, it's Liam here, I've had a message from Aaron uh, saying that Councillor Khan's computer has frozen and he is trying to rejoin currently. So uh, yeah, that's what the issue is with his side of things. Thanks. Right, OK, thank you. We've got Councillor Khan back. Yeah, sorted. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorted. Thank you very much. Okay, Councillor Khan, we get on now then. Okay, thank you. Oh, have you frozen again? No. Okay, let's. Uh, we're now on item seven, agenda item seven on page ninety-six mm. of the 
uh, agenda papers. This is reference 20 04710HFUL. And uh, it's an eight craft way steeple Morden. Um, before we get into that, can I just confirm that uh, Councillor Heather Williams, um, I believe you've got a de declaration on this one. I do, Chairman, and I won't take part in the debate or the or the vote in any way. Right. Can I just clarify with you? I, I believe Councillor Wright is going to look after the local interests. Yes, yeah, so Councillor Wright is who I nominated to sort of take on the local member role in this case as I couldn't. Oh, OK, D does that mean he wishes to speak as a local member at the public speaking element or prefers to reserve that for the debate? I'm, <coughs> I'm happy to reserve it for the debate. Yeah, sure. OK, thank you very much. OK, we're, so for the benefit of the members of the public, then uh, Councillor Heather Williams uh, has an interest in this and uh, has withdrawn from the committee for this item. <clears throat> so the proposal is for a two storey rear extension, single storey front extension and an annex within the rear garden. Resubmission of a planning application S45419 FL. The applicant is Mr. Beamy. Um, the case officer will take us through the key material considerations. Um, there is something of a checkered history with this uh, application. So the application is brought to committee due to being called in by the parish council and due to the decision of the judicial review to quash the previous application, which is currently undergoing a second judicial review following another incorrect issued decision. It is in the opinion of officers that the application should be determined at the committee level. The recommendation is approval. The presenting officer is Aaron Coe, Senior Planning Officer. Uh, before I go to Aaron for his presentation, could I just um, ask Mr Carter um, if he would confirm that all legal matters have been attended to and we are in a position to um, determine this application, please. Yes, Chair, thank you. Uh, yes, officers have uh, taken council advice uh, that this application can be determined, notwithstanding the fact that the second judicial review uh, matter has yet to be uh, determined by the courts. Um, the advice we've received that there's no reason why this application can't be determined at this time. Thank you, Chair. All right, thank you very much for that. <coughs> Aaron. Co Senior Planning Officer, would you give us your presentation, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, members. Just going to share my screen and can everyone confirm they can see that, please? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we can. Brilliant. So the site is number eight, Craft Way in Steeple Morden. And the proposal is for a two story rear extension, a single story front extension, and the addition of a single story annex in the rear garden. Just before getting on to the um, finer details of the application, I just want to go back over the history um, as Councillor Bachelor has rightly um, informed you all of. So um, in May last year, a delegated approval was issued for the development uh, with the wrong plan numbers listed on the decision notice. So subsequently, a judicial review took place and the decision was quashed by the High Court in November 2020. Um, following the decision being quashed, the same application reference needs to be reopened and put back into the planning system, which would then be reconsulted on and redetermined again. However, in November last year, another admin error um, took place and has resulted in another incorrect decision being issued for a second time on the same application. So this is a result of um, mistakes of the planning department and in the spirit of good customer service and to prevent further delays, officers invited a fresh planning application the proposed development which is now being considered a committee today uh, to prevent further delays for the applicants. So moving on to the application, the application site is number eight Craft Way, which is a two-storey detached residential property located to the east of Hay Street within the Steeple Morden Village Framework. 
There are no TPO trees within the site. The site itself is outside of the conservation area, but the steeple Morden conservation area lies on, lies on the northern boundary of the site. As you can see on the on the site location plan here, this is the conservation conservation area adjacent and you've got um, listed buildings at number 40, 38 and 42. However, this this boundary here is um, heavily vegetated and overgrown. So these are the existing elevations um, at the moment. Um, moving on to the pro proposed elevations. Uh, planning permission is sought for the construction of a single storey front extension, which would have a height of 2.7 metres, a width of 8.1 metres and a depth of 2.11 metres. So the extension, uh, the front extension would run along the front elevation, only a height of 2.7 metres to the ridge of the single storey front extension. And then at the rear, a two storey rear extension is proposed to uh, so that would remove the conservatory and fill in this space um, on the western side of the site, remaining three metres off the boundary and not going any further beyond the existing rear elevation on the eastern side. So, uh, the proposal also includes the addition of an annex within the rear garden. The annex would be located in the southwest corner of the rear garden and would be set off the boundary by one metre and run along the western uh, boundary for seven metres in total. Uh, the annex would have a depth of three metres and a height of 2.8 metres to the ridge and the condition is recommended to ensure the annex remains in ancillary use to the host dwelling. So to conclude, the proposed development is considered to be an acceptable design which respects the character and appearance of the area and the amenity of neighbouring properties and the development is considered to be in accordance with policy HQ1 of the South Cambridgeshire District Council Local Plan 2018. The proposed development would not impact the adjacent conservation area or listed buildings in accordance with the South Cambridgeshire Local Plan Policy NH14 and the MPPF paragraph 193 and approval is recommended subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair. All right, thank, thank you very much. Uh, members, any points of clarification you require? Vice Chair, do we have any? We have no requests for clarification, Chair. And thank you. We do have some public speakers, so I'll go to the public speakers now. Um, can I ask Richard Williams, please? Is Mr. Williams with us? I am with you, but I, I can't get my, my camera to turn on. Well, it's okay, we can hear you. But so Aaron, I'm just going to speak to you if that's okay. Yeah, just uh, hang on a second because Aaron's uh, taking up the entire picture at the moment. Chair. Yeah, turn your camera off, thank you. Chairman. Okay. Yes. Sir? Just in the interest of clarity, can we clarify that this Richard Williams is different to yes, Councillor uh, Richard Williams? Do, do give me a chance. Oh, us. sorry. I, I, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Mr. Williams, could you? Uh, yes, yeah, a lot of Williams is around, not least on the actual committee here. So could you just confirm that you're not a relative of any of the committee, please? We have the fifth most popular name in the UK, <laughs> so I'm not surprised. Yes. But I'm not uh, related to anybody else on this committee. Uh, and I'm Richard Williams that is guest. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. So uh, welcome to the committee. Um, I think you probably know the procedure. Um, you oh, this is all new to me, I'm afraid. Pardon? This is all oh, very new to me. Right, but I um, mean, you're aware oh, there's a three minute presentation period. Yeah. Uh, then we'll see if members want a uh, clarification. So when oh. you're ready, we've got your three minutes. Thank you. Well, I was going to say good morning, <laughs> everybody, but I'm now going to say good afternoon, everybody. I am speaking on behalf of neighbours, that's myself and Michael Reeson and, and uh, Joyce Pacey, who live at uh, with the other direct neighbours. What we have here is a huge redevelopment project which is being imposed on a quiet neighbourhood and elderly neighbours. It's my job today to make sure you have the information and context you need to make an informed decision and that you are fully aware of the implications and ramifications of, of your decision. Let me start. At the beginning of the original application, at the time the original application was submitted, the applicant did not own a craft way and could have chosen to buy a property which was much more suitable for their particular requirements, rather than this one, 
which will need a huge amount of work to make it suitable. Neither the applicant or their agents have ever spoken to the neighbours about their plans, either before they moved in or since, and have tried to simply use and indeed abuse the planning system to impose their plans upon us. The proposal says this is a two storey rear extension, single storey front extension and an annex in the rear garden, which I think you'll agree is a great deal of work in its own right, but it isn't the full extent of their plans as they also want to raise the roof line, move and replace internal and external load bearing walls, carry out extensive internal remodelling, remove roof trusses in the master bedroom to facilitate a vaulted ceiling, and remove two chimney breasts and stacks. This then becomes an immense amount of work to impose on this quiet neighbourhood and elderly neighbours who are at home during the day, particularly now during the, the pandemic, when you would, as you would imagine, we're all housebound. You won't know from the reports pack, but the couple who live at number six Craftway are in their mid seventies. The lady of the house is frail and starting to show signs of a mental health issue. Approving this plan would impose something like a year's worth of disruption, mess, noise and disturbance on this lady, as well as the rest of us. And it would be for five and a half days a week. And that would be cruel and inhuman. I refuse to believe that anyone, including the planning committee, would ever allow it. As for the application itself, a number of policies are mentioned in the reports pack, but not policy H12, which governs residential space standards. It states new residential units will be permitted where their gross internal floor areas meet or exceed the government's technical housing standards, nationally described space standard. The minimum uh, in this particular case is 37 square meters. The residential annex is around 21 square metres, so it cannot be permitted on that basis uh, alone. The, the application has to be refused. The reports pack and the applicant's submission talk about extensions to the front of the properties in this group of five and tries to use this as some kind of precedence to allow the single storey front, front extension on this property. But none of these properties have ever been extended beyond the original principal elevation. In fact, when the previous owner of two Craftway tried to extend forward, he was told it wasn't permitted. So I really don't understand that at all. South Cambridgeshire District Council talk about quality of life in their local plan. If this goes ahead, ours will be very, very poor for a long time to come. COVID-19 and lockdowns have got everybody thinking about mental health. We are already suffering and the mental health is certainly not going to improve by the imposition of this project. The health of your residents should be uppermost in your decision making process the idea of putting old and frail residents at risk has to be completely un unacceptable on any basis. The scale and magnitude and impact of this project make it completely unreasonable, particularly when you remember that the applicants had the option of moving to somewhere more suitable for them. It's a very large redevelopment to be imposed could, on a quiet. Could you bring your talk to a conclusion, please. Yeah. We actually have four minutes. This is a very large redevelopment to be imposed on a quiet neighbourhood and elderly and frail male neighbours and should never be allowed. I would like to think in the name of humanity, if nothing else, that you put a stop to this application once and for all. If you're not prepared to do that, you will have to refuse it uh, because it fails on the minimum size and, and age 12. Um, and I'm sure you want to investigate why non-existent front extensions have been used as a precedence for the property's front extension, and that's me done. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, members, do you have any points of clarification you'd like to pursue? Vice I'd Chair? Request the Chairman from Councillor Brian Milnes. Right, Councillor Milnes, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, so uh, actually there's a, um, a question I probably um, really need to um, put back to the officers over the principal planning consideration that Mr Williams raised because he raised a lot of uh, issues that really weren't uh, and are not able to be considered by the planning committee in terms of um, uh, neighbours with COVID uh, worries and, and so on. Um, and so I'm interested in terms of his objections in terms of the size of both the annex and uh, the proposal for the house and whether uh, they are indeed within the permitted development size limits. 
OK, thanks. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll return to that with the officer. I just check if anybody wants to thank you. pursue anything further with Mr. Williams. Um, Vice Chair, do we have anybody else who wishes? Uh, um, yes, Chair, I have a request for clarification. Oh, sorry. Um, is that you? All right, I think Councillor Bradman sorry, wishes. I, to I now can ask my point of clarification. Yeah, go on. Which is, um, Mr. Williams said he was speaking on behalf of himself and some others, and I wanted to clarify: is he speaking on behalf which which house numbers is he speaking on behalf of? And um, the other one was, uh, I think, as Councillor Brian Milnes has asked, what is the um, space standard? Could could the yeah, we will be pursuing. Could we that. clarify that? I did give a response to Councillor Milne that we would pursue that once we've um, dealt with questions from Mr Williams. So Mr Williams, do you wish to help on the question of the who you're speaking on behalf? Please? Yeah, so I, I live in number 10 Craft Way, <clears throat> so that's next door, but I'm also speaking with Michael Reese and Joyce Pacey who live in number 6 Craft Way, so both Right. I'm sorry. Direct, uh, both direct neighbours. Yeah, you're breaking up a bit, but I think we got that. Sorry. So can, can I just Councillor Bradman? Bradman. So, sorry, Chairman. Did he say he was speaking on behalf of ten and six Craft Way? Correct. Yep. Thank yes. you, Chair. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other speakers, please? Uh, not so far, Chair. No. Okay. So, Mr. Williams, thank you very much indeed for your contribution. Um, I will now go back to Aaron and ask him to clarify the issues on H12, please. Thank you, Chair. So, policy H12 residential space standards only applies to new residential developments. This is an extension and the erection of an ancillary annex. It's not, it wouldn't be classed as a new residential unit that would need to meet space standards. Um, on Councillor Milne's question on um, permitted development rights, the proposed annex is 2.8 metres high um, and the permitted development rights for an outbuilding would be a maximum of 2.5 metres high. Uh, so obviously the extra 30 centimetres exceeds that amount, so um, an outbuilding, outbuilding of this height would require a, uh, a planning, planning application. OK, thank you very thank much you. for that. Uh, Councillor Milnes, were you happy with that? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, just in terms of the, I, I did ask about the size, uh, which was referred to by Mr. Williams, I think of the proposed uh, extensions to the main building as well. Uh, so uh, again, it, it, would that meet permitted de uh, development or, or is that why it's here before us as well? Yeah, that, for that. So, sorry, through you, Chair. Yeah. Um, so it, it exceeds the, um, the amount of development that would be, uh, would be a permitted development this is development and requires a planning application to be determined. Thank you. OK, thank you very much and, for that. And Chairman, sorry, please. Yes. My, I wanted to know what I appreciate this is not a new development, but I wanted to know what would be the minimum space requirement for a single dwelling if it were new? Well, I'm not sure that's actually relevant to this application, is it, Councillor? Please. Can we ask? Can I ask? Well, we can ask, but there needs Thank to be a you. good That's reason. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you help the councillor on this bit of information, please? Yes. So a, a one bedroom, one person unit, a single storey would be um, 39 metres squared or 37 metres squared for a studio unit. Thank you very much, Chairman. All right. Thank you. Um, we don't have any further public speakers. We have had a, a written statement from the applicant, which you was circulated to all members on the 5th of February. So um, we will go to the debate now. Would somebody like to open the discussion? Vice Chair, do we have any speakers? Vice Chair, do we have any speakers? Um, I, I'd like to speak, Chair. Okay, go on then. Thank you very much. Um, speaking. Thank you very much, Chair. Um,
Um, what I observe with um, developments of this type, um, I might be wrong in my um, estimation of age, but I think of this style of housing as sort of 70s style or perhaps maybe 80s. Um, and what I'm aware of was that these style of houses often have very open gardens and part of their um, style is that they very often have um, a similar style of gardens that makes the whole of the development a coherent whole uh, so that they can be viewed as a, as a collection, um, often with no boundary, no, no hedges and no boundaries on front gardens so that they can be seen and they set back from the road and they give a sense of space to a, a road. And I suspect that's partly why this was allowed opposite the edge of the conservation area originally. I'm speculating, but I think that's probably part of its um, character. And so what I observe is that there's quite the development, just even without going into the detail, appears to be quite a big proposed extension. And it proposes to push the front of the um, dwelling out beyond the existing building line. Um, which would make it then out of um, pattern with its neighbours. Um, so that that I'm concerned about, and also because uh, I, I I don't think um, I think that that the, the 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 product of the extension would make a very large development, which potentially risks overlooking its neighbours, or indeed overbearing its neighbours, but I'm fairly satisfied that the um, measures that the case officer has put in place prevent any direct overlooking. But I am worried about the extension, uh, the um, annex proposal, because um, whilst I absolutely understand um, that this is, well, in fact, I when I was first looking at this, I thought, well, if this was new, it would have to have a minimum standard. And we've explained that it's not new it, it, in the sense that it is ancillary to an existing dwelling. But to my mind, it is kind of new in the fact that it's um, a new um, dwelling on the same site. So I appreciate we, we need to be careful about that. Um, but I think um, I wait to hear what others say, um, but my view is this will, could potentially be a really large overbearing development in a row of uh, of houses of a similar design, and I think it would be out of keeping with them. Thank you. Uh, and Chairman, um, yep. the next, um, oh, we've got some requests to speak. We've also got um, a comment. Wasn't Councillor Wright going to speak as local member? But Chairman, I'll let this you take that. This, yeah. So next is what? Councillor uh, Fain. Uh, Councillor Fain, please. Thank you, Chair. I am a little concerned that the I'm a bit um, concerned of Councillor Fain. Sorry, we can only see the top of your head. Mind adjusting, yeah. Uh, that's a better you can view. See, it really is me, and that's no improvement. But thank you, Chair. Um, the case officer reports at paragraph 25. It is evident that the properties along Craftway each have single-story front extensions with an integrated garage. Um, that is clearly contested by the neighbouring residents, uh, but it may not be material in determining the outcome. The question is, is this extension excessive? Um, and we are told at paragraph 29 that the proposed two-storey two extension does not involve the dwelling projecting any further to the rear, um, nor raising the eaves or ridge height on this site. Uh, indeed, from the rear of the property, which is again not important, it clearly improves the appearance uh, that there is that extraordinary construction at the moment, which would be then masked. 
Similarly, it doesn't appear to project any further to the front of the property. Councillor Bradman said it goes beyond the building line. I wasn't clear that that is the case. It does seem to me, however, that clearly in addition to a condition on the property being retained, the annex in particular being retained in the same ownership, it would be reasonable in this case to add a condition as to hours of working. The council tends not to put those conditions on except for larger developments. But as I pointed out in the past, it's actually in the case of smaller developments like this, that there is an immediate impact on neighbours. And we have on previous two occasions that I can think of, this committee has agreed to impose that condition in similar circumstances. And I would suggest that we were to do so again if we approve this. Thank you very much. Could I just point out that um, condition three is hours of working. Um, so I think that's probably already in there. So condition three on page 105. OK, thank you. Chairman. Yep. Next person requesting to speak is Councillor Deborah Roberts. All right. Uh, Councillor chairman, Robert. no, I think it's Nick Wright. I think it's Councillor Wright before me, Chairman. I thought it was Councillor Milne, but... Uh, Councillor okay. Milne, you're right, Chairman. <laughs> OK, Councillor Milne, please. <laughs> okay, well, I, I thought it was me, but... Uh, get a chance, don't worry. Uh, I would have given Deborah Roberts... Um, <laughs> Too many cooks for Brian. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'd, I'd just like, as long as those uh, working hours limitations are in there, because that would respond to Mr Williams uh, uh, concerns, of, of, uh, at least in part for that. Um, but it seem, seems to me that we've got a um, technically, um, we haven't got, uh, I see any substantive material planning considerations to object to this. So I believe I'll be uh, speaking in support of it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Wright then please is re representing uh, the local interest, I believe. Chairman, uh, I was uh, hoping to speak in reverse order since we're following that, uh, <laughs> that <laughs> policy today. And could I come in at the end when everyone's spoken? Uh, of course, that's no problem. Uh, then in that case, I think it's Councillor Roberts, isn't it? Yes, that's correct, Chairman. Yeah, Councillor Roberts, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I think we just need to make it clear to the uh, member of the public, the gentleman who spoke, uh, the near neighbour. Um, obviously, he made some quite emotional um, comments and, and regarding himself and his neighbours and elderly people. Um, but I think we, we have to make it very clear that um, the majority of those things, not the side of the house, which is a, a material consideration, but um, sympathetic as we may feel towards people not being too disturbed, that is not a reason for planning refusals. I think we really do need to make that clear because um, if it is approved, I wouldn't like the gentleman to think that we've ignored his comments. We've heard them, but um, they are actually relative to what we have to decide. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Right, and uh, our next speaker is... Councillor Martin Kahn, Chairman. Councillor Kahn, please. <laughs> Uh, again, I'd like to say that I, I have the application, I've listened to what people have said, uh, and I can't see any real sound planning grounds. The rear extension is two storey, but it's no, the existing extension to the rear already goes up to two storeys. It's not, uh, I don't think it's going to create any real uh, significant increase in over, overbearingness uh, from the existing uh, rear, rear part because it doesn't go beyond the limits of it. The front doesn't extend beyond the existing front. Uh, part a uh, single story part of the building so um uh, i i can't see the grounds on those grounds really to to refuse the annex is uh, smaller than the uh, um th than the minimum size for an independent dwelling but we're talking about an ancillary dwelling which we could uh, normally would make use of the facilities of the main dwelling so it's not exactly the same thing um so i really cannot see any sound planning grounds for refusal which cannot be or any problems that cannot be resolved by conditions. And that's the key issue. Can we resolve it by conditions? Normally we should resolve things we can by conditions. And in this case, I think we can, such as matters of the hour, hours of work. 
um, as earlier explained. Um, so um, I, I certainly still be in favour of uh, approving this development. All right. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, and Chairman, the next person is Councillor Toomey Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Councillor Dr Hawkins, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. And through you, I uh, just said to Mr. Richard Williams, um, you know, um, I'm, I, I'm sorry for the uh, distress that, you know, the, the process has caused. Um, but, you know, with this, hopefully uh, you can see that we are looking at the issue, um, you know, based on planning policies and afresh. Um, in terms of uh, your presentation, thank you for that. Um, but, you know, as uh, Councillor Roberts has said, which is what I was going to say as well, you know, we can only look at the planning policies um, rather than sort of the, the, the personal issues. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing things lawfully. So on that basis, um, we, you know, the, the size of the front extension, it's not going beyond, in fact, it's just a, you know, an infill of the garage that is in front of the property at the moment. Um, and you know, making that part of the house and the rear extension, which will I think is only what 20 centimeters above the front of the house as it stands now. Um, there is, you know, no material reason uh, for us not to approve this application, but we have heard you, we have considered the issues, and um, on the basis of the uh, planning, material planning reasons. I do not see a uh, any reason to refuse this application. So thank you. All right, thank you very much. And Chairman, I've asked if I may just speak again on one element, please. If it's new, it is. It's not going back over old ground. Right? Well, it's seeking clarification from the case officer, if I may, Chairman. Um, so through you. Um, I, I take the point that people have made about the building line and that this extension does not extend beyond the building line. What I wanted to check was, given the current position of the front of the garage, is I've got the proposed plan in front of me and are we saying that the building line will be no further um, forward than the current front of the garage, but on the left side of the house, where they're proposing to put a playroom instead. Is right, that let's, correct? Let's, let's check that then. The case officer, could you help us thank, with that? Thank you, Chair. Yes, Councillor Bradham, I can confirm uh, the building line will not go beyond uh, the front building line as existing. It would just so, fill, it, fill in the space with, a, as you said, with a playroom um, on the, the other side of the property. But the front door will in fact come forward a bit. Uh, yes, that's correct. Very slightly, but it will still be set back. Yes. OK. Thank right. you, Chairman. That was what I wanted to clarify. OK, thank you very much. And then finally, then Councillor Wright, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, and listening to what members have said and uh, speaking on behalf of uh, the local member. I've listened to what Richard Williams said and it was very emotional and I think we all understand the reasons exactly why he's saying it and understand how disturbing to everyone's life this application is. He does raise in my mind a material planning app, app, uh, reason for refusing it and that is up to members to consider and that is the the massing of the building affecting the neighbours amenities and that is a judgment for members um, to make. Um, looking at what the parish council have said, they've not raised an objection to this, but they have made the point that uh, they're very anxious that the annex should be not sold off at any point separate to the house and uh, they're concerned about any change of use in the annex. Uh, and this is should be dealt with by condition, you know, such as a bed and breakfast or anything else like that. So they're 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 anxious about making sure that's protected by condition, and 
we certainly put those conditions in on other annexes so I don't see that being a problem this application but it must be done um, so it's really up to members and uh, I think I'll leave it there chairman thank you very much right thank you very much um, can I just check with um, the case officer um, the business of tying the annex uh, to the property I, I believe you you said is, is going to be covered by condition Yes, that's correct. It's covered by uh, condition number four, which right. states that it shall not shall not be occupied by by any other at any other times um, other than purposes ancillary to the residential use of the dwelling. Right. Uh, eight, very correct way. Um, just to confirm, the hours of work and so on are also conditioned. Yes, condition three covers that. Okay. All right, members, can we then come to a conclusion on this one? Um, I have heard. Um, some arguments with the overbearing and massing of the buildings and some questions of neighbourhood um, amenity. I take it that should anybody wish to um, vote for a refusal that those would be the grounds. If not, say so now. OK, Chair, so, sorry, Chair, if uh, I may just yes. to me. Sorry. Um, I, I hadn't uh, actually noted that myself in terms of a reason for refusal, so um, it would just be helpful if, if there is a particular point about the design or, or mass of the extension that members are concerned with, just to confirm that and then... And then I mean, the, the point had been raised, but uh, nobody has said so far that they intend to re vote for refusal. No. So I think we'll probably go for a vote. Um, thank you, Chair. OK, thank you for your help. OK, so members, can we take this by affirmation or do we need a roll call? Does anybody wish to actually vote for refusal? The proposed before you is for approval. So uh, are we all in favour of approval? Agreed, Chairman. Agreed. 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 Right. No one wishes to vote Agreed. against? Agreed. No abstentions? No, so that is unanimous. And that is approved by affirmation. So thank you very much for that. And thank you, Mr. Williams, for your contribution. We'll now move on to agenda item eight on page 107. Um, the reference number is 204089HFUL, and we're at 14 Main Street, Shudy Camps. The proposal is for a two-storey side and rear extension following demolition of flat roofed garage, bathroom WC, side extension plus external and internal conversion works. The applicants are Mr and Mrs Gladman. The um, presenting officer will go through the key material considerations. The application is brought to committee because the applicant is an employee of South Cambridgeshire District Council. The officer recommendation is approval. The presenting officer is Tom Gray, planning officer. Uh, Mr Gray, over to you for your presentation, please. Thank you, Chair, and good afternoon, members. Good afternoon. Can you confirm, Chair, that you can see my uh, presentation? Yes, I can. Thank you. So this application uh, is for a side extension and rear extensions at 14 Main Street, Shuddy Cams. The site constraints are the public right of way to the east of the site. Um, the uh, dwelling is located in a development framework, as indicated uh, by this map here. Here is the existing site plan on the left and the proposed site plan on the right. You can see where the two storey site extension will be located and rear extensions to the back. There will be an extension to the turning area and parking area to the front and hard standing uh, where the current grass verges to the front of the site. The existing and proposed elevations and 
the approximate measurements showing the approximate width of the garage on the left, 4.6 metres, and approximate width of the right on the right of the two storey extension of 4.3. The existing floor plans and phase floor plans are shown on the screen now. Here are some views of the site. This is from the front of the site. From the west of the site. From the public footpath to the east. And from the rear garden. The key considerations are impacts upon the character and appearance of the local area, immediate impacts, provision, parking provision, and highway safety, and other matters. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Members, any points of clarification required? Vice Chair, do we have anyone? Uh, none so far. Could I just ask a question though, Chair, please? Yes, carry on. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Gray. Um, could you just remind us, as I recall, this site is high, relatively high, high relative to the road and to the bungalows on the opposite side of the road, isn't it? Yeah, so it is, it is in a slightly elevated position. Um, so the front of the site does um, go downwards to the public road. That's correct. Thank you. And this effectively doubles the width of the front elevation of the house. Is that right? Or am I mistaking it? It's um, it's less than half. It doesn't double it. It's slightly less than, than doubling the, the width. I'll show you my screen. Thank you. Again, in the, the approximate width. You scooted through your presentation quite quickly. <laughs> I was trying to. Apologies. Can you see the screen? Yes, thank you. So through you, Chair, at the front, the um, the extension extends on top of the existing um, outbuilding and garage and fills in the space above. So it does sort of double the width of the elevation at first floor level. Is Am I right? So it's, it nearly doubles it. The, the current width of the two storey element of the dwelling is 5.1 and the proposed width of the two storey extension is 4.3. OK, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, any other points? Vice Chair, do we have any further? Uh, yes, we have a request from Councillor Martin Kahn. All right, Councillor Kahn, please. Um, I went to look at this site uh, on, by street view from um, and the issues, as people have commented, it's above the road, it was quite imposing. And there was a similar pair of cottages immediately to the left as you look at it, uh, both of which look the same and which are, I think are probably ex council houses um, and have a slight, interestingly slightly curved upper windows. Um, I just wanted to ask in terms of what normal policy is, do we not, um, this shows a break in the street uh, in the roof line so that it makes clear that it's a separate uh, uh, extension and, and basically uh, adds on to the uh, the existing dwelling to sort of attack on uh, rather is it a policy that you should not continue on the same extensions on the same roof line because I feel in this instance it actually would have been preferable um, to make it look as though it was one whole building rather than a building with an extension just wonder what the policy is because I, I find it quite well I've no problem about there being an extension there and the size I find it rather jars when I look at it visually uh, and also that they haven't continued the slightly curved roof uh, top window detail on the, to on the top of the windows. Should I answer that? Yeah, yeah. comments there. Um, so in terms of uh, policy, um, generally 
generally for extensions, um, we'd like uh, extensions to be subservient to the main dwelling in terms of ridge height and slightly and set back. In this, in this instance, it is both set back slightly from the principal elevation of two storey dwelling, as well as um, the ridge line um, less than the ridge line of the current dwelling. Um, I think if 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 it was if it was continuing the, the, the ridge line of the existing dwelling, it'd be more prominent on the street scene. Um, and that's in, that's in my view. Right, thank you very much for that. I don't think we have any further speakers, do we, for clarification? Last year? No, Chairman, there are no further requests to right, thank speak. Thank you very much for that. We do not have any uh, public speakers for this item. So we'll go to any debate that you may wish, or we can go straight to a vote if you prefer. Is, is anyone wish to speak to this? Um, Chairman? Chairman, I will speak if that's, if I may. Councillor Bradman, please. Thank you. Um, we know that this has come to, this application has come to us because uh, it's a residence in the ownership of a member of staff and um, it looks perfectly reasonable to me. Um, and the plans, um, indicate that they've taken care in the way that they've proposed the development and whilst it's quite a sizable extension of the property um, the um, extension at the rear is just single story so it won't affect their neighbours uh, and um, I, I have no objection to it and I will be voting for it chairman. All right thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Khan could you turn off your camera please otherwise uh, we're looking at your dressing gown. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I don't think we have any further speakers, do we? Yeah, yes, no, no, Chairman, no further speakers have requested. I wanted so to speak. Oh, sorry. Sorry, okay. who's that? Councillor I think Khan. that was Councillor Khan, Chairman. Councillor Khan, did you want to speak? Yeah, briefly. Yeah, I just uh, want to say that, uh, as I expressed, I concern about the bulking and the appearance of that uh, how, uh, building. I feel it doesn't achieve the the, the best uh, solution, particularly with the details of the window, the windows and the size. I feel in this instance it would have been better to try and create what appeared to appear to be a, a terrace. But it appears to meet the uh, normal policies of the uh, of the local authority, so I can't criticise the applicant on this basis. So, but because I'm unhappy about it, I, I will be abstaining. Right. We've got no further requests to speak so far, Chairman. Thank you very much. And in that case, we will come to a conclusion then on this. So we know Councillor Khan wishes to abstain. Can I just check if anybody wishes to pursue refusal? I hear nothing. So can I take it with the exception of Councillor Khan's abstention that everyone wishes to vote in favour of the recommendation, which is approval. Agreed. Agreed. Chairman. Agreed. 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 Anybody against? No, I am. I think so. That is um, approved. So that's agreed by 10 votes to one abstention. Good. We move on then. Uh, item nine we've already dealt with at Palmyra that that has been deferred to a later date. We are now on agenda item 10 on page 125 uh, and this is the enforcement report. Um, is Mr Fudge with us? Are you presenting this report please? Mr. Fung, are you with us? I am now. <laughs> All right, good. OK, welcome. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> you think you want to update us on? I haven't. I understand um, that um, Councillor Wright is requesting uh, an update with regard to Smithy Fen, which um, Mr. Carter is going to uh, um, provide. Thank you. OK, 
Right. So, Mr. Carter, you have an update on Smithy Finn, I believe. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I just took the opportunity to speak with colleagues in, in the lunch break following Councillor Wright's request. Um, so the council is in the process of securing additional resources to uh, assist with the investigation um, and pulling together an up-to-date picture of the position in terms of planning breaches, as well as other considerations in conjunction with the other council service areas involved. Um, I understand Councillor Wright was um, updated by uh, Stephen Kelly, the Dire Director of Planning and Economic Development, to that effect as well. Work is ongoing, um, but obviously happy to take back any further feedback that members may have. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Wright, is there anything you want to pursue there? Yes, Chairman, thank you. And uh, thank you, Mr Carter, for that update. I'm, I'm slightly surprised to hear the Council's uh, searching for funds for uh, from other sources when it has its own fund sitting there specifically for this purpose for any enforcement action at Smithy Fen and so I'm slightly surprised to hear that and in fact that was part of my update from Stephen Kelly. Um, so uh, I think our concern as councillors is that you know this has been going on for a long long time and you know we just are not seeing any action on the on the original any increased action on the original enforcement action uh, we've got about 60 percent uh, uh, of what we asked on the original enforcement but there is still 40 percent to follow up and that doesn't seem to be done uh, apart from some action through the cambridge magistrates which has been ignored largely and also uh, the council were talking of going for injunctions on the site and that has not been done either. Now I appreciate that over the length of time this enforcement action has been going on, the site has changed substantially. Um, so we, we just need to know and to keep this in front of the public that action is being taken because there are a lot of vulnerable people at risk here. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Chair, sorry, th through you, could I just clarify when I said resources, I, I meant officer resources rather than financial resources. So sorry if that wasn't clear in my original update. Right, thank you very much for that. Uh, Vice Chair, I think we've got some more further speakers, have we? Uh, Chairman, yes. Um, we have Councillor Toomey Hawkins. I thought I saw uh, a head Hang on, did we do, uh, sorry, did Councillor, sorry. Me. There's Councillor Khan has spoken already, hasn't he? So then we've got Councillor Heather Williams. Sorry, Chairman. Uh, sorry, Councillor Hawkins. It's, uh, That's fine. Uh, Councillor Williams, please. Thank you, Chairman. I was worried I'd got forgotten there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it was just a question on the general enforcement report um, about our figures for close for the year to date. Um, and, you know, we it does it does still worry me that we're sort of behind our normal trend because we can see from the previous years, you know, we've been very good at closing cases and everything else. And I'm just wondering if there's um, if there's a, a broader issue that perhaps we need to know as a, as a committee as to why things are slightly dropping. Um, I know in November, obviously, we had a, a bit of a setback, but um, yeah, any clarification around that would be much appreciated because it's we can see it's performed so well in the past. All right, thank you very much for that. I don't know if uh, Mr. Fung would like to comment. Yes, yeah, I'm happy to comment. I mean, obviously, the, the res pandemic restrictions are having an effect on our ability to visit sites. Which is obviously which is causing a back, backlog in investigations. Um, so yeah, there are we have more cases in hand, um, which we will be looking to, to to close when we can complete the investigations. But there is a delay. Each site has to be um, risk assessed um, individually by the officers, and and some it's just not not possible to visit at all at the moment. Right. Thank you very much for that. Thank, 
Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Fund. Yes, thank you, Councillor Williams. Uh, Councillor Dr. Hawkins, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Through you, uh, just to uh, go back on uh, Smithy Fen. Um, I can assure Councillor Wright that action is actually going on. Um, there has been um, uh, sort of an aerial survey of the site, and I think as Stephen probably has already told you, uh, what we can see at the moment is somewhat different to the layout uh, that was part of the injunction um, um, that we had um, back then. So trying to match, trying to carry on with the injunction on a, on, a, on a different layout is a bit of a difficulty, but there are there is action ongoing um, and as soon as there can be more updates, you will be informed. Just to let you know that when it's not that we're not doing anything, we are doing something. All right, thank you very much for that. OK, any other comments? No, Chairman, there are no further requests to speak. OK, all right, we've noted that then. Uh, thank you, Mr Funge, for your update. We move on to agenda item 11, appeals against planning decisions and enforcement actions. Um, we have a look then at appendix one. Um, I mean, uh, I am aware that we have had quite a significant um, appeal on the Water Beach issue. Um, that I asked Mr Carter to update us on because it has some significant um, implications for policy. Mr Carter, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, apologies, I, I misunderstood our conversation yesterday. I, I thought we were going to uh, to raise that at, at the next meeting, um, but uh, I can uh, give them a brief, uh, brief explanation. You've probably all received the appeal decision um, at uh, Bannold Road, I believe it was. Uh, sorry, I'm just opening it now, um, which was a committee decision uh, last year uh, for a scheme for uh, 18 dwellings. Um, the appeal has been allowed uh, and unfo unfortunately some costs awarded against the council uh, on the basis of the decision. Uh, this is a site that's located outside the defined settlement boundary of Water Beach, but members may recall it's surrounded on, on all sides, I believe, by uh, infill development that was granted uh, when the council couldn't uh, display a five-year uh, housing land supply um, and the inspector noted that whilst the starting point for the decision of uh, the development not according with the development plan because of its location outside of the boundary was the correct starting point the inspector considered that there were material considerations that indicated that uh, a different decision should be made um, and that uh, in this particular case, the inspector found that the development uh, wouldn't uh, cause the harm that had been identified by the council in its decision uh, and uh, found those factors to outweigh the conflict with the development plan um, and allowed the appeal. So uh, it's, it's uh, a, an interesting decision in the context of developments that are out with our settlement boundaries um, and just highlights the, the need to take into account other material considerations uh, on a site by site basis. Uh, particularly for a site like this, which has modern development uh, surrounding it as well. Thank you, Chair. Right, thank you very much. Uh, I think Chair, Mr. Chair, if I may. By all means, go on. Um, I think it is important that we just highlight that the partial award of costs did not relate to the decision as to the development framework. It related to, de to design matters. Uh, is that that's correct, isn't it, Chris? I believe so. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Um, if members haven't received it, I'm happy to circulate both the uh, the appeal decision and the cost decision following the meeting uh, for members to read for themselves. Um, it's, you know, the inspector's reasoning is is quite clear, um, but uh, obviously I'd be happy to answer any further questions after that if that's helpful. Chair, if I may just go on um, to yep. uh, appendix uh, three. Um, and the informal hearings. Just to clarify that uh, the appeal at uh, Land Rear of 24 to 27 Payne's Meadow Linton, uh, that relates to a refusal by the committee, not a non-determination. So that's uh, incorrect in the report. It was an application that was refused. I just wanted to highlight that as well, Chair. Thank you. 
right. Thank you very much. OK, members, any other points anybody wants to raise on appeals? Vice Chair, do we have anybody? Um, I think, Chair, we ha I think Councillor Toomey Hawkins has already spoken, and I think we had a request from Brian, Councillor Milnes and then Councillor Heather Wilson. Right, OK, Councillor, Councillor Milnes then, please. Thank you. Yes, um, I just wondered whether uh, Chris Carter could uh, update, if at all, on the land at Mill Lane sourced an appeal, which seems to have been dragging on for uh, years now. I, mean, I think there are three applications that have been joined uh, in, in that, and we just would like to <laughs> see some progress. Do you want me to help on this one, Chris? Uh, Chair, forgive me. I, I do have some background noise. I'm afraid there are there are men working in the garden. But um, uh, Stephen may may like to assist. But I understand that we're very close to agreeing a, a hearing date now. I think the council and the appellant have put four dates to the planning inspectorate and are waiting for the inspectorate to confirm. Uh, Stephen, can you add anything further to that? Uh, yes, it's uh, it's not a case of the council dragging its heels at all. Uh, the 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 appellant has themselves been writing to PINs to say that because of uh, lockdown, they weren't in a position to agree an earlier date. So, so they've been the guys pressing for the, the matter to go back. And it's two applications. It's one for 35 units and one for 45. Oh, I thought it was a third version as well, but that's no, fine. No, no, just okay. two. Just two, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and Councillor Heather Williams, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it's just if Ms Carter is able to um, just draw our attention to if any of these, well, uh, bleh, I'll get my words right in a minute, any of these appeals uh, are challenging our five year housing land supply with particular interest in the source to more, because my understanding is because of the time that's elapsed, they can now submit new evidence. Um, so is that still the case? If so, have they submitted any more evidence? Um, and are do we have any challenges to our land supply? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think as I've uh, informed Council Williams previously, uh, the the appeal state, the original appeal statements on the schemes at, at Sawston did touch on five year supply, but without providing any evidence. Um, it's possible that uh, new evidence may be submitted given the amount of time that's elapsed, but I'm not aware that any has arrived so far. And with regard to the other appeals, again, I'm not aware that any of those uh, relate to a challenge against the five year land supply uh, for the council. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Reid wanted to add to that since he's appeared on the screen. Uh, thank you, Chair. No, nothing to add from uh, to what Mr. Carter said. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Um, I don't think I've got any further speakers. Have I, uh, Vice Chair? No, no, Chair, there's no further speakers. OK, so we've noted that and in that case that's at the end of the meeting thank you very much everybody thank you for the public who have taken part today and thank you all who have been watching um be pleased to know members that our next appearance is almost imminent again friday the 19th of february we have an extraordinary meeting where we will deal, deal with the born uh, airfield uh, application, just the single item. So I will see you again on Friday the 19th. Um, other than that, I say thank you everybody and good afternoon. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Um, before we close the meeting, could I ask Mr. Carter, something. Uh, you are still live, uh, yeah. Vice Chair. Uh, would you like to be still live or should I close the stream? No, 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 please close the stream. Okay, thank you.